Jesus Christ, Ray. <laughs> okay, let's try again. Hello. Talk, talk, talk. Test, test. Hello. Any luck now, boys? Anything? <laughs> Okay, can you guys hear Lance and uh, Resolve? Talk, talk. Yeah. Hello? Hello. Yeah, they can hear us, I think. Can you hear them? Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Okay, all right. Well, that was a fucking absolute shit show, dude. <laughs> can we <laughs> just go, go ahead and fucking call it after that? Jesus Christ. Let's, let's just be clear that none of this was my fault. It was all Ray's oh, fault. Oh, my God. <laughs> I got to do everything here, so. Um, I mean... <laughs> I swear. Oh man. Anyway, uh, welcome to the latest episode of the podcast, the Lance and Ray podcast. What is it? Do you have to, what is our podcast even named? Is it just Lance and Ray? Yeah, the Lance and Ray Third Strike podcast. Jesus. My name is first because I'm the star attraction. Oh no, dude, you're you're last. You're last. Ray is also here. Yeah, you're like the band that no one wants to go see. They come for the co, you know, the the prelims or whatever. They watch that band and then like, oh, the headliner <laughs> sucks. I'm gonna leave so I can like leave the parking lot early and not get stuck in traffic. Uh -huh, yeah, no, that's probably it. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, uh, welcome to the podcast. Uh, we're joined today by a special guest, Resolve, the prodigy. Resolve, how you doing, man? Hi, guys. Thanks for having me. So, <laughs> people, actually, a lot of people have been requesting for you to, like, be on the podcast, actually. And Dan, Dan was clamoring oh, no. during his episode. Like, <laughs> like yeah, you guys got to fucking get Resolve on. You got to get Resolve on. So, um, here we are, that's right? That's great. Yeah. Uh, appreciate you yeah. joining in, man. I know your camera's not working at the moment, so this one's just gonna be audio, guys. Uh, so yeah, dude, let's go ahead and uh, hop right into it. Kind of let us know, uh, like, how you found Third Strike, right? And first of all, yeah, how us. how old are you? Let's let's just do that uh, first. Uh, let's get that out of the way. <laughs> uh, right now, I'm I am 20 years old. 20 years wow. old. Wow. Turned 20 in uh, no, I guess I turned 21 in June. That's closer. Nice. And then how? Wow. And then how'd you hear? How'd you find Third Strike? Like this game isn't exactly like you know, it's not no fucking Call of Duty or something where it's everywhere. Like, <laughs> how did you find out about Third Strike? When when's the first time you touched this game? So uh, I was telling, uh, I think you had left, but I was telling Lance that thinking about the questions that might be asked on the podcast, I remembered. Um, earlier parts i guess of my third strike career because usually when people ask yeah i like start with uh i got steel hammers videos recommended to me on youtube i thought that the combos were cool i learned them started posting them and that's kind of what got me uh noticed you know and i got invited to the Yurian server but i guess that's not really where it starts um the first i, I can't remember the first time I saw Third Strike, but I grew up sort of surrounded by a lot of games. I, I think mainly from my uncle. He's into a lot of video games, but he's into fighting games. And I remember I have really vague memories of like CVS2, Puzzle Fighter, Third Strike, uh, Super Turbo, stuff like that, like older fighting games. Uh, Third Strike kind of always stood out as the cooler one because like the music... The artwork is just really sick. All the characters, the voices, it's um, very cool. But I didn't really, like, care that much when I was little. Like, I played it a little. I played it about as much as I did all the other ones. Um, it was just kind of another uh, another one of those random games. Like, I grew up with, like, uh, I played a lot of SNK games because we had, like, a collection that was for the Wii and me and my brother played it on the Wii. Um, uh, but I remember uh, I had a, a PS3, and I couldn't afford the full version of the game, but the demo was free. So I had the demo, and I'm pretty sure with the demo, you could only play as Dudley, Ibuki, yeah. and Ryu. Yeah, yeah. You can only pick that. those three. Um, okay. Interesting And characters. so... Yeah, and so I, I played Dudley, um, and I, you know, it was fun. I, I guess like the game was it was cool. I would play with my cousin and my brother, uh, and I would just I, I remember getting destroyed 
by my cousins like Ryu. Um, and then eventually that same uncle I was talking about came over, saw us playing on the demo version, and said, this isn't right. And so he bought us the full version. <laughs> <laughs> and then I uh, uh, started playing with a lot of characters. I think I remember playing Akuma just because he looked cool. Um, and that went on for a while. I kind of would play a little when my cousin would come over with my brother. And then one day I was like, okay, I'm going to pick a different character. Um, a weird one because I like Shoto's and like boxers were like that's pretty that's street fighter right mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. going back to street fighter 2 and after that there's usually been there's shodos there's balrog and stuff so i'm gonna pick a character that looks kind of weird and just to be different i guess <clears throat> and i landed on yurian just because he's you know pretty sick he's ripped and he's yeah. <laughs> the color i played at the time was uh what was it I think it was the special color. It was red. I don't know. But it's yeah. like, oh, this character is so sick. That crush, kill, destroy, get ready to die. Tears off his suit in the beginning of the game. Like, this is cool. This is my character. Um, and I think uh, I got Yurian videos. Reckon oh, okay, so I was playing Yurian. I guess I was talking about him. I don't know if my... I guess my phone was listening because I got, yeah. like, <laughs> Best of RX recommended to me on YouTube. Yeah. And that just completely blew my mind. Sick I was like, idea. oh, my God. I, I did not know that the, that's what you could do with this character because up until that point, I was just, like, doing the worst combos. Launcher, chop mid-screen <laughs> into meaty uh, Temporal Thunder or something. Just complete garbage. <laughs> and seeing that just completely blew my mind i was like okay that is godlike i'm gonna play that color i need to learn how to use the mirrors and that's when i stumbled across you know leaving mongolia x minute murder stuff um and how old were you and then? Well, like when you discovered kind of all these videos like were you like 16 was this like a year uh, ago like <laughs> <laughs> i think probably yeah around 16 okay uh that sounds right um yeah at 16 and um i watched these videos like these are so sick uh, i want to learn every single combo in these videos so i just watched them on repeat over and over and i was a pad player i didn't have an arcade stick like the only person i knew that played on was my uncle and he had uh i don't know what it, it was it had like street fighter four characters on it or something mm -hmm. I don't know, but I was playing on the PS3 controller. Super, super fucking hard to land. Like, flying on Nagos and stuff yeah. on the PS3 controller. But I just kept going at it. Uh, I think at, at the time, my at the time, my, like my girlfriend at the time uh, got me uh, uh, the Itaki Omni. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I know it's secure. Yeah. Yeah, and um <clears throat> I was very grateful like it was definitely an upgrade. Um unfortunately it was the Korean version. <laughs> uh but you know, <laughs> make the she, she tried, um, right? She tried. <laughs> yeah, she tried. I, I, I didn't have the heart to tell her. Is, is this the right one? Like, yeah. yeah. This is <laughs> this is awesome. And it was I mean an upgrade from the, the PS3 controller and then um that made it way easier. Um and then I could actually get these combos down. I, I never played online. I was too scared. Um, <laughs> I, I just kept practicing them, practicing them, just waiting for my cousin to come over so I can just completely destroy him with these <laughs> setups that he's never seen. <laughs> um, and then uh, the PS, I, like I was playing on PS3, but I had a PS4. Like it was already out for a while at that point. Um, and I didn't know that their 30th anniversary was a thing or that it had uh, Third Strike on it. Eventually, I, I think I was uh, at GameStop or something and saw the, the, the di uh, what's it called, the box. Mm -hmm. I looked on the back to see what was in it and it thought it had Third Strike. And I thought, well, 
I gotta get this. This has to be an upgrade. I'm going from PS3 to PS4. This has to be better. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely was, right? Everybody loves Sturdy. It's what a great fucking port. Thank you, Capcom. Yeah. Like, so you're and, playing 30th I mean, online? Yeah, so I got 30th, and on the PS4, I, I, I'm sure you could, like, record stuff on the PS3, but I didn't know how. It was very, um, very easy on the PS4, and that's when I started recording it, and I made a Twitter, uh, I, I guess I, I'm probably 17 at this point, I made a Twitter, I made my name, <clears throat> I put RX in there, because my hero, right? Yeah. And I don't know where I got the result from, I, I think I just... I wanted to choose uh, a word that also had an R in it. I don't know. I just thought it sounded okay. Yeah. Like, there's probably a few other words I was going to go with after RX, but I landed on Resolve, so I was RX Resolve. Um, and I was recording these videos, posting them on Twitter. And, uh, uh, I, I I think I was at adding Dr. Steelhammer and all this stuff, and he would like it. And then uh, Jandor, which I don't know if you guys know Jandor. I'm familiar. He's also yep. a Urian player. And um, he messaged me, and we kind of just bonded over the fact that at the, I think we're about the same age. Maybe he's like a year younger, but the same age, both playing Urian. Uh, bonded over that, and he talked about Steelhammer and the server, and that he would. He was going to try to get me in. And I was garbage at the time, so I'm sure Steelhammer had his, you know, his, uh, because it, it took a couple, uh, it took a second. I wasn't instantly, uh, put in the Illuminati. I was just putting, <laughs> posting videos, and, you know, he would talk to me every other day and, like, oh, yeah, I'm still working on it. I'm trying to get it. Working on an invite. Yeah, it takes a minute, you know, you gotta right click and everything. <laughs> Um. Uh. Eventually, I get in. I, I'm sure I messaged Steelhammer at some point. I don't think it was for advice or, I think it was just, uh, all praise. You know, like you are the best. Uh, <laughs> you <are> awesome. <laughs> um, you uh. You understood Dan's love language very early. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um. Pretty soon after that, I was in the Illuminati. Uh, <laughs> at least that's how I remember it. Um, and in there, I feel like I, I'm very, I'm a very shy person, even um, through social media and stuff. I don't really, uh, I don't think I really talk too much. Uh, I chime in every now and then when I feel like I, the thing I have to say is absolutely useful. Um, so I stayed quiet. I kind of kept my head down and didn't really say anything in there. I just watched them talk about the game. And when people would post their their replays or ask for advice, I would... It's usually the same stuff that was being said, all the advice. <clears throat> and, you know, uh, Dan has these matchup breakdowns of all these great players, Kuroda, RX, Ushi, you know, Rue. So I watch all these. I'm just silently consuming all of this in the corner of the server. Uh -huh. um, and I don't, I don't think I've ever, I ever posted a replay to be, to be uh, reviewed. Because I was, I think I, I was probably embarrassed of my, uh, of my play, and I was like, I can, I can figure this out, like if. 15 other Yurians are getting the same advice. It's probably going to apply to me too. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm just going to take all this, work on it. Uh, but I was still on on 30th. So there is maybe like five playable connections. So I could only work on so much. Like I can only learn so much by getting beat by Arteus every single day. <laughs> shout, <laughs> shout out to Arteus, dude. Shout out to Arteus. Yeah. I, I wonder if we played on there. I wonder if we played. Because I was on 30th um, for a while, too. So. Maybe. I, I the, the people I remember playing is uh, uh, Arteus, 
um, Ryu in training, which I found, mm. I, I think I had talked to Dan, he said that's, he goes by Mural Tag, or had gone by Mural Tag yeah. on uh, Xbox Live. A very storied online player, Mural Tag. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, I think Big Bad Wolf was yeah. on there. Yeah, Ruben, dude. Uh, Shout out to Ruben. <laughs> yeah. Um, there's a 12th player, I'm blanking on the name. Uh, I can't remember. No, we don't talk about 12 players anyway. <laughs> no, no, I know. I know who you're talking about. Actually, uh, he plays twelve, and he, I think he played Dudley. That's like an alt. Um, oh, he's on. He's on. Fight Kid is Twilight Sparkle now, right? Like, uh, or, uh, yeah. I don't actually remember his original tag. I can't remember well, that's the guy, name, right? But, mm-hmm. but I know. Yeah, I know exactly who you're talking about. I used to play that guy a lot too. Um, and and then my cousin, obviously. Um, but so that was kind of it. I I was even though I was watching these breakdowns and uh uh all the advice the other Iranians were getting like i still sucked i wasn't focusing on the ground game that was never really a conscious thing it was like i i could remember the easy stuff like crouch medium punch is garbage like don't use that <laughs> and i was sure. like okay that's yeah. it I'm not... <laughs> i know all the crazy i can kill you in one hit i just need a launcher so i'm just gonna try and get that um I really don't feel like I improved a, a ton on there. Um, I was really just kind of honing my execution, I guess, because that's that's just what kind of came easy. Uh, and I had spent so much time already just trying to learn everything in Two Hammers videos. And, uh, oh, uh, kind of funny, I guess a little off topic, but not really. Uh, I remember I, I was thinking about what I what you guys might ask on here, and I remembered, I uh, there's a super beat up DS at my house, and recently my brother, fun way to power it on, he looked at the uh, the videos that were recorded on it, and there's some super super old nine year old resolve combo videos on there, <laughs> like I, I was recording myself in front of the TV, showing combos I made on like uh. Mortal Kombat versus DC Universe, Hell Joker yeah. versus Deathstroke. <laughs> Hell yeah! <laughs> um, so looking back, I think that's kind of always sort of intrigued me um, about fighting games is the combos, really, because like I I didn't have the eye for anything else, really. It was just um, I could see these cool combos happening, but I didn't know I couldn't see the ground game or anything like that. Sure. Or neutral or footsies. <clears throat> and so I really feel that's what I uh, did on 30th was just I learned these really hard combos. I was really just trying to hit them. Like I didn't have any sort of ground game really. It's, and it's really hard to implement when on 30th looking back now, like. I get on, or not anymore, because my cousin got a PC, but he was still on there for a while, and so I would, even though I had Fight Kate, I would get back on to play him. I was like, Jesus Christ, I cannot anti-air you, or <laughs> see these dashes. <laughs> but I, how much of the game plan could I have really implemented back then, if I was paying attention to it? <laughs> but, um, eventually, I got a PC, I got Fight Kate, and really, that's probably the biggest thing that helped me get better um the connections were way better it's a lot it's just a lot better than ps3 or ps4 were um and there's a lot of really good people on there and that's when it kind of clicked is like oh okay so sure i know all these combos but i just cannot get a launcher these guys won't let me um so I kinda had to go back to the drawing board. I rewatched all these videos um and try to to um learn footsies I guess and neutral. Um and I really could not have done it without Stu Hammer because he could see it and he could point it out like what they're doing what buttons they're using at what ranges if he wasn't commentating over it, i really don't think i would have seen it mm. um 
but so and then that sort of started to click a little um i i really just i threw myself in to the deep end i just played as much as many people as i could tried to implement the game plan i would i would watch my uh my my own footage no matter how bad it was um i would keep uh, i would watch as much high level footage as i could try to implement uh, try to emulate what they were doing mm-hmm. um and uh i don't know i i guess people started to notice cuz i i was just, i've been doing the same thing i've always been doing but i started getting bigger and bigger wins i guess under my belt mm-hmm. Um, I feel like that's kind of, uh, for the most part, the story. I mean, I haven't really, the whole offline aspect to it is really only the past couple of years. For the longest time, it was just online. Uh, I learned the combos. I couldn't land them. So I went back and learned how to play neutral. Uh... And it, I don't know, it just kind of, it's just clicked. Uh, and people uh, talk about my patience a lot. That's mm-hmm. something I hear. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not really a conscious thing I'm I'm doing. Like, I I, I don't think, uh, that, that sounds really hard. Like, <laughs> not, having, not having it already and then telling yourself, like, just the entire time when you're blocking, I don't know, some uh, Ibuki comes to mind. Just some Ibuki block sure. strings. Just like don't press a button, don't press a button. Like there's, that's not really happening in my head. I'm just, I'm sitting there, and and why would I press a button? I just I don't want to. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. No. That that's that's yeah. And we'll and we'll kind of hit on the offline stuff in the last couple of years here as we go through the podcast. Um, awesome. Yeah. So I have a couple of questions uh, from those from from that intro. Um, uh-huh. Okay. So and this is I'll just do the the very quick one first. It does not matter. This one matters the least. I just thought it was funny that you mentioned mural tag because when I was starting on Xbox Live back in 2011, mural tag was ever present in my online journey as well. I kind of <laughs> wonder like how many players of the last 15 years can be like, oh yeah, I started off playing Mural Tag for two years. I mean, I <laughs> did. On, about on, him. on 30th, yeah, that's who I was playing as well. I was playing like, yeah. Mural Tag, Arteus, uh, I think it was like Spartan in training or some shit. Or oh, Spartan, yeah. Spartan, yeah. Spartan something. Like Spartan, uh, yeah. Uh, the, the, the 12 player's name is Giga something. Giga, yeah, Giga Scrub. Oh, Giga, yeah, Giga Scrub. Yeah, 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 Giga Scrub, yeah. The Dudley, He's Twilight Dudley Sparkle 12. now on Pycade. Oh, that's him? Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, same God, guy. Fuck 12, dude, fuck 12. I can't, I can't. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Anyway, anyway, can, uh, yeah. Continue, Lance. Sorry. Mural tag might be the uh, the fucking genesis of like, in like yeah, 15 years of third strike history, and we just never talk about him. Um, okay, so you basically described a story in which you were kind of already looking at Urian and thinking Urian was cool, but then you you found Dan's videos and that really inspired you, and you started reaching out to him. You got into the Urian server and Dan. Uh, taught you basically you learned a lot of stuff from Dan. So I guess my question is, is Dan a gateway drug to playing a bad character? <laughs> Did you feel like you were misled? Um, if you could do this all over again, would you pick someone else? The the cult of Steelhammer, dude. He, he, Urian cult, dude. It's like a like he basically he he produced so much documentation and was so you know his he has a charismatic personality. He attracted a whole generation of Urian players around that time period. He didn't tell them, I don't think, when they were getting into it, that Urian <laughs> is not that good. Well, um, I mean, it's not... I I feel like I kind of sort of inferred that from the videos, because it was like... Um, most of the videos just like, do this sick shit, like, flex your ass on your friends and these people <laughs> online. I didn't really get the sort of... Uh, you're going to be a champion one day <laughs> sort of vibes from that. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, it's, it's at the core of every, every Urian is just doing, you want to do sick shit. You want to be sick. You want to land cool combos. Mm-hmm. And then yeah. if you want to do more than that, that's, 
that's what the server's for, I guess. <laughs> you know, there's a lot more, uh, uh, I guess, uh, emphasis on like matchups, matchup knowledge, uh, neutral, that sort of stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so, so my feeling, and you know, I, this might, I'm not, I may not be right, or this might not be <laughs> precise. But like when I played you, my closest analog that I can remember to playing you, like if I think about like, oh, what does this player feel like? The Japanese equivalent, right? Um, Mm -hmm. You kind of remind me of playing Rue a little bit where it's like, it's very annoying to hit you in neutral. And I know you said that was something you struggled with at first, like playing neutral, playing defense. But at this point, like it's clearly like when it, and obviously the combos are a great strength for you and you can just do everything, it seems like. Uh, But yeah, your neutral and defense are also really good. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, yeah that, that's what it, the ruse kind of similar to that, where it's like, oh man, this is so annoying to hit him. Like, you know, unless I go force damage on him, like I'm not going to hit him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he was um, really uh, um, helpful when it came to learning neutral because I feel like th- there's a lot of footage with him in it. Maybe it's just what there was in the server because I'm terrible at finding my own stuff. Like. Uh, keychain and steel hammer just seem to have it and they know where to look like I can't read Japanese I not even a little bit um, so I really like me looking for footage I still do it now like my probably my top uh, thing on YouTube is just RX Yurian Rue Yurian like and yeah I cannot I can only find so much while doing that yeah um, but there's a lot of Rue in the server and uh so, uh, I, I think I took a lot, took a lot from from him. Even though I'm an RX fanboy at heart, I think mm-hmm. it was um, sort of more straightforward, uh, easier to em- emulate his his game plan. It, it, a, a very uh, uh, large basis in neutral. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it seems to me like. Okay, and you can tell me if I'm wrong. What inspires a lot of Urian players now is like, you know, RX, RB, and then you see like Dan videos, right? That seems to be a common pipeline. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's weird, right? There's always been like a Urian messiah, I think, leading people, I won't say to the promised land, because I'm (laughs) I'm not sure if that's what, but you know, in the old days, right, obviously... RX has been around forever, and people have been inspired by RX for, you know, 20 years. Uh, but before Dan, like, we had Cruz, I feel like there was a whole generation of Urian, online Urian players who were like, oh, I watched Cruz play, and he's like, so, you know, what he's doing is so cool. And then, at some point, Dan, you know, with his YouTube content and everything, he became, like, okay, the the patron father figure of Urian. But there's always been at least one guy who's like, okay, uh, come play Urian, children. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Dan's um, videos are so sick. I almost tried to learn Urian combos almost, and I went to training co- the training mode, and I was like, "Fuck this! I can't do this." It's <laughs> so hard. It's dude. really, it's it's really um, it's not not. I I talked about getting it and it sort of clicking, but there was, it, it, it there was a lot of work uh put into it for the longest time like i i want to say like a few months i could not for my life do stand medium punch and do a head but mm-hmm. like i was on the uh on the oe uh trials and that was like one of the first three i think and i just was stuck on it i could not do it for my life <laughs> yeah yeah and uh, it's funny like you said like oh what clicked for you immediately was the combos and you're like i don't understand neutral but i can i can at least do these combos and and you know that's and that's so funny. Like I, I, yeah, that's exactly the opposite of me. I have never wanted to sit down in training mode and learn a combo in my life. Like I want to play characters where I can hit buttons, and then my opponent will get hit by them. It, uh, I don't know. I, it really just, I, I could be slow. I don't think that I'm like super. Uh, uh, I don't know what the word would be. Like I, I really just I did not see any of that. Maybe, mm. maybe it's not really my fault. Maybe everybody is like that when they first get into it. But I really, uh, 
I, I could watch, I don't know. I mean, at the time, Third Strike wasn't really, super, like, I don't remember it being insanely popular. Like, the stuff that would pop up onto my phone was usually four, I think, or five. Um, and I don't know what's going on, really. <laughs> like, I, I would, I could watch a ton of four, and I wouldn't see any of the, the footsies. I would just see this super long combo that Daigo did or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I think you're exactly right. I think, so footsies, so obviously combos, like you said, you can just see it. And you can see the result, and you're like, oh, that's really cool. And that's like the easiest path to like, okay, if I just learn this combo, it might be work, right? It's not easy to learn the combo. It's going to take work. But if I can just do, if I can just land this combo, I can win. Footsies and neutral, uh, these are very, it's kind of abstract, right? And you only really learn neutral kind of just like by playing it a lot versus good people and failing and then neutral and third strike is one degree more abstract, right? Because Harry is always present and it's always hidden from the footage, I feel like. Like, you you can't always watch a match and see the parries. It's kind of like you kind of understand where prob- parries probably are from experience, you know, after you've played a lot of good players and you've, you kind of know what you're looking for. But even then, like, parry is hidden from us. We only kind of see successful parries a lot of the time. And so it is quite abstract and it's not super obvious Exactly like, oh, what should I be doing here? Combos are much more, you know, you can see it. For, you know, get to see the, here's the combo, here's the result. Very straightforward. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know with footsies for me, like, like I, I mean, I watched a lot of third strike footage and stuff when I was a kid. And then the first tournament I went to, I remember like, like, oh, I know these combos. And then like, I could do the combos in training mode, but when I would try to like apply it to a person, I was like, oh, fuck, they won't let me do these. Like... I could do them every try in the dummy and in arcade mode, but when I try to do it on a human being, like, yeah, no, dude, get away from me. Like, you're not going get, <laughs> to get get close to me to even do that shit. So I'm like, oh, okay, this is actually hard. Like, this is where the game actually is. Like, not yeah. – combos are important, but, like, getting able to, to, to land those is, like, even more important. And I still can't do that to this day. I can't hit anybody with any <laughs> fucking combos, dude. So. <laughs> now, when you were lear- – like, when you were like, okay, I got to learn neutral game – and you were talking to Dan about it. Now, I know there's some resources out there that kind of try to teach neutral game or footsies. Is that so? I'm thinking of like the Sonic Hurricane footsies guide, or like there was this one shoryuken.com thread that Yuki posted like a decade ago, where basically he translated it from Shie, and Shie basically describes footsies as like a rock, paper, scissors interaction, right? You know, you can whiff punish if they whiff. So, uh, yeah, that whole thread. Were you utilizing that? Were you reading through that stuff uh, to try to get a con? Like a, get a handle on it all. Uh, no, I I, didn't, I haven't read either of those. Um, okay. I uh, it really was just I like Dan would say, okay, these buttons, uh, they work, they're good at this range. Here's what they beat, and then I you know depending on what matchup he was reviewing, and here's the buttons they would use in that, and here's the two players kind of playing around those those options. I was like, okay, so I get it. I, I, I guess I, I think I understand it, but I, I guess that's where it just sort of ended for me. It was just really hard to understand. I don't think I could have learned footsies by reading anything. I I really felt the best way was just to keep playing really hard players, and uh, I guess just naturally learn learn that way. Learn learn the spacing the spacings and uh, just that game. I don't know, because, I mean, you, you might make one breakthrough, I guess, against a good player, right? Like, oh, okay, so I'm actually starting to give him trouble with this button around here. This is that well, when we're playing that game, right? Rock, paper, scissors. And then now they bring out another option. Okay, well, here I go. I have to learn this. And then that just keeps happening over and over and over. Um, and I just try to do that with as many strong players as I could. Mm-hmm. I, I don't think I've ever read any any guide on uh, on on footsies. Even the uh, the Bible for Yurians, right? The uh, Yurian versus the world. Mm-hmm. Like by the time I had sat down and opened it, I feel like okay, like these things are. I, it sounds familiar. It's it's stuff that he's already said out loud in a video. Mm-hmm. So let me just go down to the uh, footage section and uh, 
see what I can learn from there. Okay, okay so that's cool. So that's a totally different... Yeah, so it's funny. We've, we've had very opposite approaches. So for me, like, when I learned, you know, I used those guides, and I, I, I understood, you know, kind of like a, on a conceptual basis, some of these ideas. Um, but it sounds like for you, it was very concrete, right? It was like, oh, in this matchup, Urian hits this button at this range, and it's good because it beats this and this, and they can't, you know, something like that. Like, it's very specific, and, it, you know, very Urian-specific, and, like, concrete examples. Yeah. Um, and I think... I, it feels a little bit more, uh, I guess, sort of, I don't know what it is. It, it's always been sort of pretty uh, free flow, uh, uh, natural, I guess. Like, I feel like now I'm not really even so much thinking that. That's one of, the, I feel like one of the refinements that I've made is like before, and it's it's a lot of Urians are still guilty of this. Um, and, you know, I still am from time to time. It's like, okay. This button is good at this range, so I'm going to stand at this range. Just he ya, he ya, he ya, he ya, just spam it, you know. Sure, yeah. Uh, and uh, and that just it doesn't work. Like it, the first one, maybe I don't know, but it's just uh, that, that's not really how I'm thinking anymore. Is like, okay, this is this is good here. I'm going to press it every time. Like they have other options. You always have another option you can always do something else so you know rock paper scissors can get pretty crazy um and it, it's hard to sort of put into words now how i how i see it but it I, it just feels very natural and it, it kind of just it, i know what i'm doing and it works um i've been messing around with a lot of side characters lately Mm -hmm. um i've made at least three alts in the past week alone uh, okay <laughs> um this because uh you know people get their feelings hurt when you when you play on alts already right <laughs> sure but uh you know when I, I i play on my main and you know you challenge me right so you see that beautiful pink s rank you know like, oh yeah we're <laughs> uh, <laughs> getting into it now and then you see me pick like Hugo, you're like, what the hell? Like, this is not what I, what I signed up mm -hmm. for. Yeah. And every single time, it's like, Urian, please. Like, can you play Urian? Because <laughs> like, okay, I guess. Like, I didn't want to be the teacher today. I wanted to be the student. <laughs> that no, that's really interesting. Uh, so okay, I have a very similar reason, right, for why I would play. You know, I've made plenty of vaults in my time. You know, definitely. Uh, but it, yeah, I, I can really identify with what you're saying because when you get the reputation as like a blank player, especially against other good players who are like trying to improve, like they challenge you because like they want to play Lance Chun. They're not being like, oh, can I, oh, I, you know, oh, I'm also fine with Lance Makoto. You know, that's not what they showed <laughs> up for. Um, yeah. And so you, you feel this sort of pressure of like, okay, I always have to play my main character uh, because that's what they want. And so alts is an opportunity for you to just kind of just do whatever you want. You know, there's no expectations. You know, there's obviously that's its own can of worms where you're like, okay, now people are like, oh, it's a Smurf. You know, and then they yeah. might have their own ideas of what motivations are there. Uh, but yeah, it, it basically takes the pressure off of you. Like, you don't feel like, oh, I have to live up to my to my name resolve, right? And and play your yeah. and and win and so on. I get to be Kawabunga Carl on the weekends. <laughs> you know, it's great. <laughs> Kawabunga Carl. That's a sick name. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I like playing alts on different characters, right? Like, I want to see how far I can take my Yang or my Ken or whatever. Like, I just see how far I can push that and not, uh, yeah, have to have to play Yun constantly. Because I, I hate that, too, when people are like, can you just play Yun? It's like, no, dude, I just want to fucking have a couple beers and maybe play some Ken tonight. Is that okay? Can I just do that? <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. That's been always an aspect, too, of, like, I've always thought about that, right? Because, uh, like, the top top, top guys, if they pick a side character against you, no one says shit, right? Kang or Nika fuck, or Yuki picks, you know, Goki against you, you're not going to be like, can you just play Yang? Like, that doesn't yeah. happen. Like, yeah. They've earned that, that they can just do that, and no one says shit. But for a lot of people, it's like, no, fucking please play Chun-Li. Ray, I do not want to play your shitty Alex. Please just play Oh Yang. my god, dude, don't shit talk my Alex, alright? You know my Alex is godlike. <laughs> yeah, no, it's really, it's really great. Thank you, thank you. Um... Uh, yeah, 
<laughs> so yeah, no, I, I definitely <laughs> identify with that. But uh, it, it seems to, I, I guess it's sort of transfer. When, whenever I talk to people and after I just played side characters, like I, I'm probably not playing them. Like uh, it's not, it's not really like resolved Dudley resolve for you. It's like, I'm really just playing Yuri and I just, I, I don't know. I have different clothes on, I guess, you know, <laughs> like yeah. I am sort of doing the same thing. I understand that every character has different strengths and weaknesses, so I sort of adjust uh, adjust to them. Uh, but I still seem to have, like, okay, <laughs> decent results. Mm-hmm. It varies depending on the character. Sure. Um, but uh, the things I learned, how I learned how to play neutral with Yurian, seem to transfer at least a little bit when I'm playing sides. Well, I, I don't think a lot of people understand, too, is like... It's important to play the matchup in reverse sometimes to you, right? Like, I mean, me and Lance yeah. had a, a set the other day, and he played Yun, and I played Chun, because I've, I've been struggling a lot, like, Yun Chun, so I played Chun Li, like, oh, well, fuck, this is easy, like, this is how I get beaten, and then he plays Yun, and he kind of stands at a distance, or he's doing things, and I'm not, and I'm like, oh, okay, now I see, like, what my character's potential is, but I don't even notice it until I'm playing on the opposite end of it, right? So, like, even though I'm playing Chun-Li, I'm still trying to strengthen my Yun up, but I'm just trying to see it from a different point of view. Uh, so I, d- I don't think a lot of people understand that. It's just, like, yeah, playing another character. Sometimes I'm playing other characters to try to help. Like, what what does this character want to do? Where do they want to stand? What buttons do they feel is good? So that way it helps my Yun in, like, the long run. So. Yeah, and I mean... Lance is very talented, you know. Tell me more. Tell me more. <laughs> okay, podcast <laughs> over. It's done, boys. That's a wrap. Um. Yeah. So I'll comment briefly on Ray's question, but then I have a question for for resolve. So yeah, I I think that's right. I think playing both sides of a matchup often gives you insights, right? Because like Ray was talking to me on voice while we we're playing, right? We're playing Chun Yun. He's like, I cannot hit you. Like Yun cannot hit Chun Li. And it's like, okay, let's play the other side of the matchup. And then a few games in, he's like, Oh, Chun Li cannot hit Yun. And it's like, yeah, like. <laughs> Depending on how each character plays this and where they're spacing, what the moves are picking, it can be very hard, you know. Depending on like who's like in control of neutral for the other person to hit you. Either way, uh, and I think you only really find that out when you play both sides of a matchup. Uh, things that you're like, you know, I, you know, when I just played Chun Li years ago, I always like, oh, this character's so stupid. Oh, that, you know, like I understand I have to play the best character, but man, fuck, some of these options on offense are brainless. <laughs> Yeah, you know, but then I played the other side. And I was like, "Oh no, it's not brainless at all." You know, it's actually brainless. The fact that Chun Li is beating all my options by just hitting low medium kick over and over—that's what's <laughs> brainless. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, well, it gives you perspective. Well, even like the Chun, like playing Chun, like uh, I shit talk Chun there for a while. Like this character's fucking stupid, you know. And then I played mm-hmm. Chun, and I'm like, I hit fierce punch, and they like walk back and like sweep me, and I'm like, "What the fuck was that? What do you mean? <laughs> what, what do you what do you sweep that for? Like you can win walk in, thing wait, in wait, 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 this is this is ridiculous, dude." I won that set, by the way, Lance. Just, just let you know. As <laughs> Chun-Li, yeah, so. I'm, I'm really, yeah, I'm really invested in that. <laughs> uh, okay, so, resolve. You, you were saying basically that. So, my sense of what you were saying is that you, um, your Urian DNA and your play style that kind of grew out of like you know, like I, I feel like you grew a play style that's very, um, really strong at like defensive and, and zoning, and when you play side characters, your Urian DNA from that kind of shows in those characters. Is that right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, uh, I, uh, I, I really don't... I, I talked about it earlier that I really don't... It's not a conscious thing that I'm just... That, I, that I'm turtling, right? I just feel like I'm playing, I'm watching the other player, and it's, it's whatever. I'm playing third strike. Um, the other day, I was, uh, I was at Don's... And I was playing uh, Rena, uh, and I was playing. I think I was doing Ryu and Dudley, but it was just funny. He was kind of giving me a hard time, like you fucking turtle, like just. Uh, and I was laughing. Um, I, I just, I really don't see. It. I'm just like, well, what else am I supposed to be doing here, except nothing? Like, why would I press a button here? You're just gonna fucking. Cork, uh, stand heavy kick, Cork, I don't even know Dudley stuff. D- you know? Dudley, Dudley players, you. Dudley players. Am I right? Like Dudley players. <laughs> so. Yeah, no, that. I, yeah, I mean, 
to me it, it seems like and this again that's i'm speaking outside of my element here but it seems to me like that is something that grows <laughs> organically from trying to win with urian versus really strong people it's like he is naturally a zoning character played at his peak like he should be really hard to hit um because you can't like you know without agus you can't always just like force the issue on offense right you're playing Urian versus Chun Li without Aegis. What are you gonna like? How are you gonna go like win the round with offense? It's very difficult, right? Like with the moves that you have, it's not that easy. Just like okay, I'm just gonna go hit him now. Yeah, yeah, it's it is really hard. I, <laughs> it's hard to hit her with Aegis too. Yeah, yeah, that is true. Yeah, <laughs> that is true. Yeah, like uh, I've never. It just doesn't really click with me. Like I, you could see um, other Urians probably have better success with it, right? Like. You talked about Cruz before, like the more aggressive uh, Urians. I, I really, I don't, I, it just doesn't click with me. I don't understand. Not that there's like any right or wrong way to be doing things. It's just, I know the way that clicks with me. And it's like uh, a different language thing the other way. I, I just can't seem to emulate that. I can't play like Cruz or RB and and have that same sort of success i'll just get destroyed um yeah no i, I think that what makes i was sense. saying <laughs> i think like most players the way that they grow organically is that you you kind of figure out what works and then you like get really good at that and then you know your your growth kind of you know if that's like the the trunk of the tree then you you know you have these branches in different places but your trunk is still your trunk you're going to play the same way I mean, that's how I feel too. Like whenever I played side characters, I feel like, oh, you can tell. I think Yuki commented on that once. Like, oh, you can tell like Lance is a Chun Li main because like all of his characters just play like Chun Li. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and I think Nico's like, oh yeah, Lance plays Yang like Chun Li. Uh, so yeah, it's a common. I've heard that feedback a lot. As well. Yeah. Um. Okay. So, oh, so one last question about kind of off your life story, and then we'll move on to the next question. So you talked about how you got a PC. Uh, you got Fightcade. This was the biggest thing, like, helped you improve. Um, so, yeah, tell me a little bit more about, you know, how that was. I know you said you kind of, like, were working your way up the pecking order, you know, beating better and better players. Uh, this was probably right when, like, Fight K2 came out, right? Yeah, yeah. Fight K2 was, like, already out by the time I had a PC. I I think I remember, like, the it, it's pretty recent, right? Like, Fight K2 coming out. Um, I think I remember seeing a lot of Twitter posts. I think uh, Dan even tweeted, like, you know, this is huge, or something along those lines. Like, mm -hmm. it had just come out. Yeah, I, I just, it, it's pretty fresh, I think, by the time I got a, got a computer. Okay. Yeah, no, I think, uh, so my, so my first, so, you know, I've, I've been around a long time, and I've been one of the, you know, I've played online more than probably most people, especially when I lived in Alaska, and I didn't have a local scene. Um my frustration was always like, I love, love Fightcade's lobby system, but Fightcade One is a pile of shit, guys. Like it was so bad. <laughs> uh, like did like it was clearly set on an emulator that was probably like made for Windows XP. <laughs> the jitter and the bzz is happening constantly, even on a perfect connection. <laughs> Fightcade One was terrible, and it was not a good approximation of of online Third Strike. 360 was good, but like you know, you had to pay to be on there. It wasn't that easy to match make. Fight Kate's lobby mm -hmm. system is way better for matchmaking. So you know, for, you know, within five to seven years on 360, there was like you know 20 people total mm -hmm. on 360. Uh, and I felt like Fight K2 was like, oh, finally the promised one has arrived. The netcode's good, pretty close to arcade, and the matchmaking really is the big thing. You know, and, and at this point, Fight K2 like Third Strike's always in the top three games, right? Like only AOS yeah. 98 and 2002 are up there with it. So you kind of experienced third strike line third strike like the best it's ever been in my opinion. Yeah, um, uh, I feel like it's it really felt like I, I really I guess I've been around technically for like the last twenty years of it, right? But no, because like all these things, all these big moments in third strike, I was like three, so uh, <laughs> sure. you know, yeah, <laughs> I, I don't know anything really, so. When I actually was in it, um, it felt like, oh, this feels like a sort of, um, I guess, resurgence. I don't know because I I remember, it's just it's big and there's a lot of there's a lot of content. You know, like uh, I the jazzy uh, 
I forget what it's called, like NYC. It's it's a documentary, right, on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Little like that was there, and that was pretty recent. And there's, uh, I know Frankie had posted a lot of stuff about like these Japanese players that they use, like Film Room, right? Yeah, I miss those, by the way. They just I don't know if yeah. Frankie's watching this, but Jesus Christ, those were good. Dude. Still, Bring those still waiting on back. the RX episode. I know, right? <laughs> I was like, please do Yakun, please do Yakun. I never got it. <laughs> Frankie, please, please. <laughs> but uh, it just felt like there was a lot, and and you know, Steelhammer's videos, obviously. So it just felt like okay, there's a lot happening now, and the jazzy circuit. I I was really confused about the jazzy circuit for a long time. I didn't know what it was. I was too afraid to ask. I was like, oh, this it's probably been around a long time. Like if I ask, it's just it's not gonna. That's a stupid question. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, hmm. uh, a lot of things were happening around that. You're right. Now that I think about it, a lot of things were happening simultaneously there. Right, like Jazzy One happens. So basically, the you know we have the TFC years, and then everyone just kind of takes a year off. And I'm kind of like, okay, that's it. That's the end. It was a good you know run. <laughs> um, and then Jazzy One happens, and then I think right after Jazzy One, within a year, COVID happens and Fight K2 launches. And uh, I know we talked about this way back at the time. Um, you know, in retrospect, it's not always on our mind, but like COVID happening did really great things for online third strike, <laughs> you know? Uh, Cause I mean, that's basically when you came in, right? Like probably around COVID time, if I'm, if I'm pegging this right. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I had, uh, I guess started to put time in like real time in a little bit, just barely before, uh, you know, lockdown and everything. I, I, uh, put, I, I guess I kind of glossed over. It. It's not really that important, but I had, uh, I guess, what would it be? Uh, sophomore, yeah, sophomore year of high school for me, I just started dumping a ridiculous amount of time into uh, Third Strike and Yuri. Um, I mean, I didn't really have anything else going on. You know, I didn't really do anything at school. I didn't really hang out. I feel like I'm a pretty, uh, uh, I'm not very social and i i think maybe that's just because of the people because i love being around i love going to third strike stuff I, I one of the best things that's happened was going to the finale and meeting with everybody getting burgers with lance you know <laughs> like <laughs> it, it was awesome uh but so i had yeah i was dumping a lot of time in already and then lockdown happened didn't have to go to school anymore I could just join a Zoom meeting and then have that going while I'm playing Third Strike. Like it just let me dump so much more time into it than I, you know, than I already was. <laughs> yeah, that's a uh, that's definitely when like you started being on my radar. I was right around like COVID hitting, um, and yeah, that was such a I don't know. I obviously I don't want to like glorify the beginning of COVID. It wasn't a great time. <laughs> in the world you know i'm not saying that <laughs> but you know right like COVID happening right when fight k2 launches um to me it was just like oh like you know and i feel like we got a lot of players in that like a lot of time like, i'm not sure like if, if everyone was, like knew in that time period or like i didn't know about them and then they just kind of appeared on my radar i'm not sure what was you know what the deal was there but yeah there, i felt like there was a whole almost like a generation like a fight k2 generation of third strike players of which obviously uh you're one of the the players that people think of the most in that time period of like, oh, Resolves, you know, leveled up so fast and he became like a really great player over like a very short time period. Yeah, I I remember, I don't know if it was because I was, you know, new and I, I guess one of them, but a, a few names were sort of thrown around as like the new generation, right? Like uh, uh, Sunny Bubbles, uh, and I don't know how to say his name. I, I still I forgot to ask him if it's Env or Envy. I think it's I. Uh, I've been calling him Envy for the last two years. Yeah, so if I'm wrong, it's sorry. Envy. It's Envy. Yeah. Okay, that's what I thought. I just anyway. <laughs> there's, there's a few names like that. Um, Shout out to Envy, by the way. Uh, yeah, Joy is. Envy. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, all those names for sure. Yeah, and those those were just oh, and uh, Keychain. Obviously, he was um, 
well, you know, he was there in the server, one of the biggest, one of the biggest helps for me. Uh, but yeah, all these names were kind of getting thrown around, and I, I sort of uh, feel like I don't really consider myself really sort of uh, competitive, but I heard these names, and I was like, okay, like, we're all in the same boat. I'm going to fucking kill you guys. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like I have all these names in my head. Mm-hmm. I've... I, I don't think I got to... I really didn't get to play any of them, like, when I was first starting out, which is great, you know? <laughs> I don't have any any uh, losses under my belt there, except for Keychain. I, I think we, we played a few times, and that was pretty rough. But, um, yeah, I mean, that, those are just the names that I, I remember when I was starting out was for those ones. I'm probably leaving out a few. I, I can't really remember them now. Mm-hmm. No, I think that's uh, that's really cool, and I think that's exactly you know, I think everyone who like is a competitor probably has a similar mindset, or maybe not everyone, but many people. You know, like <laughs> these are the guys who like I think are my peers. I want to crush them. Here's the guys that are above me. I'm gonna fucking catch up, and I'm gonna crush them too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's the competitive spirit. That's why we play. Oh wow. <laughs> well, that now. Uh have a name for it i guess i just didn't really know <laughs> i'm not competitive but i'm also gonna fucking kill you if we ever play <laughs> i'm not competitive i'm just gonna destroy you if we ever play yeah <laughs> yeah um okay um okay so moving so moving to a little bit of different uh now i kind of want to talk about your experience with offline third strike i got a few questions here in a row about that um so First off, just tell us about your local scene. I know you play in, it's Bakersfield, right? This is like, I'm, I'm geographically ignorant. I grew up in Alaska, um, but this is basically like middle of California. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure we're uh, San Cal. Um, yeah, the the way that whole thing, everything here in town started was really, it just, it just kind of happened. Like, I... I so I talked about sort of leading up to that. Like, I, I think I stopped around. My, I stopped the story, like, I'm playing on Flight Cade and I'm grinding mm-hmm. as much as I can. Um, I'm still posting on Twitter and stuff. I post combos. Um, and I, 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 I guess I I mentioned that I was playing out of Bakersfield. I don't remember why. I don't remember who I was responding to. But my friend Alex, who I didn't know at all at the time, he... Uh, tweeted at me and said like wait you're playing out of Bakersfield he's like yeah he's like dude I'm from Bakersfield too like we have to meet up and so we uh, text and you know I'm going back I'm not a very social person so I was like oh I don't like what who is this like he wants to meet up in real life like I, I've heard stories of this already um, I have to think <laughs> this through <laughs> you know um uh, he had, he said he had a friend who has uh, cabs, and that's um, sort of the commissioner here. He's on Selmo. He's got a ton of candy cabs, and um, I guess they had met up at like it's it's a I think it's a break room at an office, um, okay. and he's got cabs in there, and uh, he said that we or I should go. And uh, I, I can't remember. I, I think we might have played. Some time went by. It wasn't that fast, but like he messaged me. I think we might have played a set or something on Fight Cade. And then, and then those messages came, and and I went out, and it was. I'd never done anything like this before, so I was like, "Well, this could very well be the end of me. <laughs> I'm very gullible. Like, just tell me that there's third strike there, and I will go." <laughs> you know? So I went, but it was it was great. I went, came in. There's the cabs. There was a can't remember who was there. It was probably we have a Alex slash Ryu player here, Thomas. I'm sure he was there the first meetup. But uh, it was great. Um, never had played on a Japanese style cab, I should say. I was going to say never had played on a cab before. I my brother tells me. Uh, that we played at Camelot Park on an American style cab 
a really long time ago. I don't remember it. Um, and then one day he showed me a picture. It, it was me sitting there frustrated. And he was holding his hands up. It said, Akuma wins on the screen. And <laughs> <laughs> so there's concrete proof that I have played on something before <laughs> on a cab. Um, but that was my first time playing on Japanese uh, candy cabs. And it was really, um, really great. Uh, there's really nothing like it. I, I, if I could just play on that for the rest of my life, it would be great. But, uh, you know, <laughs> kind of expensive. Yeah, I went, that's, that's why I went out and bought some. I was like, fuck this. I don't want to play on anything else that's not this anymore. So, Yeah, the prices uh, actually have gone insane in the last, what, like... So I bought my cab, what, in like 2014, maybe? And, um... Like seventeen hundred. Now, of course, I live in Alaska, so it was like a thousand dollars to shipping. But even you know, and that felt absurd to me at the time. Like I'm going to spend three thousand dollars in an arcade cabinet uh, to play this old video game, and that felt absurd. Now, <laughs> like they're even more right. Like that's that would be a great yeah. price at this point. Yeah, don't even ask me how how deep I am in a hole with my third strike <laughs> caps. It's preposterous, dude. It's an investment. So, an investment. Yeah, yeah, it's fun though. It's fun. I I wouldn't change anything now. So. Um, so, uh, so, so when's the first time you kind of traveled outside maybe your local scene to, to play Dirt Strike? Um, well, I, at the time, like around that, that time, I don't really, I don't know if it was just me or if it's hard to find, but I didn't really, I guess, know my, my stuff. I didn't know any Third Strike history. I still feel like I'm, you know, very lacking. That's why I love when, uh, Lance just tells stories in Discord servers is because I'm, oh, this is great. Like, I don't have to ask or anything. Like, this is just, I'm getting little drops of Third Strike lore, you know? Um, uh, so I didn't know anybody. I didn't know about any of the scenes. I was under the impression that everybody is very, uh, uh, I don't know what the word would be, like, sort of clicky, I guess. Like, you can't really just go out. Like, you can't suck. Mm -hmm. And maybe that was just what I was telling myself. But um, uh, we were meeting up there at, at the office, and you know, I was doing really well. Like I have, like I think I have one picture in my phone from the around that time, and it was just I had gotten like over a hundred wins on the cycle, like of the guys that met up there. Um, oh damn! And. Uh, the first time I sort of, uh, I guess was connected to a different part of the third strike scene in real life was FM Juan came down to the office. He was the first, um, person to come down, but nobody wants to come down here. You know, like nobody will make, well, you know, e even now, I don't know. I mean, we, it, uh, a lot more people have come down but uh, Juan was the first one and we played and I want to say that we went even I, I can't remember mm -hmm. I remember uh, I had heard that he was coming down so I tried to find as much footage of him as I could mm -hmm. and I, I, I had asked Dan what he thought and he has very you know high respect uh, a lot of respect for Juan as he said he's an amazing player mm -hmm. and uh and he warned me he's like he's the sweetest guy um yeah outside the game like, he's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah but his akuma is absolutely like the cheesiest uh akuma you will ever play like you are going to get demon like just accept that it's going to happen at least once uh when he comes down but then he he sent me uh like videos of Juan because he's traveled you know, I, I I don't know how long he's been around uh, exactly, but I know he's been around for a second. Yeah. Um. And kind of knew that I might have I might be in trouble because the videos he sent me was like, oh, FM one versus RX. I'm like, oh well, okay, <laughs> <laughs> great. <laughs> but I watched as much of it as I could. I found the uh, Boiler Room channel, which has a lot of yeah. sets between between players. Uh. And I just, I I just tried to, 
I did as much work as I could on the uh, Akuma and uh, Ryu matchups. And I feel like it sort of paid off. I, I would say we went even. I, I'm I'm sure yeah, he he probably got more. I don't know. I just, I don't remember. But it, that was fun. He was really nice. Um, and that was the first time I felt sort of uh, connected to um, a scene bigger than you know, just the office, I guess, like, he came down, and we had talked after that, and he talked about potentially coming down to, uh, Boiler, I think, um, and for the longest time, it was just impossible, like, I don't, I didn't have a job, I didn't have a car, like, it was, there was absolutely no way I could make it out to, you know, L.A. on a Sunday. There's just no way. So I did it for a long time, and I got... Let me see. I, I can't remember the first time I went down there. I think we might have done other stuff in town first. Like, we... Uh, I think the first tournament we ever did was uh, uh, Bakersfield Comic Con. We did a tournament there, and that was cool. Um Renob came down. I think he was one of the only uh, outsiders that really came down. I, I know he brought. It was him and his friend. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to remember who all came. Don't know. I'm sorry if I forgot. <laughs> I, I really have terrible memory. It's hard uh, trying to remember the way everything happened. But he came down. I almost didn't go because uh, I had the flu. I was bedridden. Like I, I had was at the peak of it the night before. Mm-hmm. Um, had already told everybody, like, I, there's no way. <laughs> uh, they convinced me the next day, but I, I went home right after. <laughs> but uh, that happened. I I want to say... I, I know the, the, the other place I traveled to was, was Arizona, but I think I went to, to uh, Boiler first before that. I don't know. So that tournament happens. I'm still playing online. Uh, Juan goes back to LA, and I'm assuming he talked about playing me because for a while we would talk, and he would try to set stuff up, and I just I couldn't. Like I really wanted to, but I couldn't. And he would say that Five Star keeps saying, "Bring me the boy." <laughs> <laughs> and so fucking need I really want <laughs> and uh I don't know so I, I just couldn't for the longest time and then eventually uh still couldn't but uh my friend Alex the uh Buki here in town was uh we went together we carpooled and uh I don't think I don't. I, I can't remember if the first time I went in Five Star was there or, or not. Mm-hmm. I remember going and no, actually, maybe he was. I can't remember. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I, I I have the memory of being there and meeting everybody, B Tran, Kaz, um, and I think he came later. Mm-hmm. Uh, and. Uh, I don't know, but <laughs> that, that was—I guess—that was the first time that I traveled out outside of uh, Bakersfield to play Third Strike, and it was very cool. Everybody there was um, very, very nice, very strong too. <laughs> I think it, it was uh, Etran, Kaz, Rod, uh, Five Star. Uh, I think Hungby and oh, Chris yeah. that were there which was pretty sick. Um, so, you know, I got to meet all these all these people, and it was great that Alex was there. I, I love going places with Alex because he's very um, good at talking to people, and I am not at all. <laughs> and especially being around those guys because, I, you know, I know who these people are. Like, I'm, I play Third Strike. I'm from California. Like, I at least should know a few of, uh, you know, these players, but I, I knew all of them. And especially after finding the Boiler Room channel, um, watching all them play and whatever, and 
So it was good to have Alex there. So he could talk to people while I sort of fangirl and then get my <laughs> turn at the cab. <laughs> hmm. Okay. Uh, so there's a couple things I want to I want to ask you about based on everything you just said. Um, uh, so so I too remember your when Juan came when Juan came to uh, Bakersfield, and you know I think someone you know someone messaged me is like oh resolve going back and forth with Juan right now, and it was like uh, you know it's funny that we have those moments where it's like oh my god like really like you know uh, one of those it's like a coming out party basically right. Um, <laughs> so Juan's a very experienced great player you know. And I think also, whether it's totally fair or not, um, Urian players who, you know, they play on, like, they, you know, they start playing online, there's always, like, a sense with people of, like, okay, but can they do it offline, right? That's, oh, yeah. uh, that's always the, you know. And so, yeah, someone had messed me, like, oh, like, Resolve's going back and forth on Arcade with Juan right now. And it's like, oh, shit, let's fucking tune in. <laughs> um, yeah, I remember that. I mean, it's funny that, you know, that was, like, your first offline experience with an out-of-town out player. Uh, that was certainly the, something that caught my attention and other people's attention as well. That was like a, to me, that was like your first moment. Like, oh yeah, like there have been many moments where I thought, oh, Resolve can fucking play. But that was one of the first ones. It's like, oh yeah, yeah, he's legit. That's you know, and I was watching the way you guys were both going back and forth. It's like, oh, this is great, great matches. Uh, Resolve's holding his own for sure. Um, I, I thought it. Oh, go ahead. I I forget about that that uh. I did get a lot of shit <laughs> for being an online player. Mm -hmm. I guess I sort of phased it out. It's not really important. But yeah, that was definitely a thing, right? Like I would play online and as I got, you know, beat better and better players, there's sort of, I almost felt like after every single time, every time I barely took a match or I lost 5-4, but it was closer than it should be. You know, mm -hmm. it was like fucking online, you're in so hard. GG's though. Like, oh. Uh, yeah. The, the, the classic <laughs> fight kid talk. Yeah. 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 Like GGs, I guess. <laughs> at, least yeah, you got, a... at least you got the Go GGs, though, right? Like, at least you got the... <laughs> yeah. the worst is when you're like, GGs, and I just fucking leave. And it's just like, oh, come on, dude. <laughs> come on. Come on. I, I I forget about that. That after Juan came down, I feel like... Uh, I think a little bit after that was when I did the, the Koi House set with uh, Maria. And I, I think it was because of that, because of Juan coming down. And me holding my own, like it got. Uh, my friend Alex, I told me he's uh, a lot more. Uh, I, I guess in, in intimate with the scene. I don't know, but like he said, like oh yeah, dude, like some old heads like noticed that like there was a lot of people watching. I was like oh, that's you know that's cool, and I think that's what kind of got the uh, got me in that that set. But I know. Renick has been around for a long time. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, so, I think. Uh, oh, go ahead. Keep going. That was it. I think it's just uh, it's uh, it's Renick, James, and and uh, Ray, right? El Guapo. Mm -hmm. El Guapo, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think that's a, a experience a lot of people can probably resonate with, right? There's it's a two parter. There's I'm coming up. And every good player that I beat is fucking like uh, they're they're not they're resistant they're unhappy to be losing. Uh, <laughs> and then when you put add in online, which at this point uh, most of on most of Third Strike in America is played online, just or you know that's just how it has evolved over time. So there's yeah. always going to be that doubt of like, could he really beat me in arcade? You know, everyone's prideful, especially people who've been around for 15 years. And you know, once you kind of have some idea of like, this is kind of where I am in the pecking order. This is who I can beat or not beat. Then you know it can be upsetting. Some you know when like a, a new up and comer beats them, and, and especially I think with certain characters, you know Urian, Yun, you know plenty of people have talked about the online characters that are buffed. You know like there's even more resistance. They're like that's not real. That wouldn't fucking hit me. On a... <laughs> and everyone has to go through that like you know that doubt period, right? Of like everyone just doesn't want to give you your credit until eventually you just become undeniable, and they got to be like, okay, like this guy's fucking really good. Yeah, uh, it's probably true with Mario, though. <laughs> oh, what are you, sorry, what is that? Oh, what oh are we mean? talking about Frog? Yeah, Frog. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I, fu yeah. I fucking love Frog, dude. Everybody hates Frog's yeah. gameplay. It's so good. Like, 
It fucking cracks me up so hard. I remember when they announced like the Jazzy Online like ranking things. Our chat was literally mm-hmm. just like fucking Frog, like fucking Moria. Like I don't want to fucking play him online. So, shout out to Frog. Love you, buddy. Hope you're awesome. watching this. So. Uh, so, yeah, and I thought it was really cool that you like, you mentioned like oh you heard Juan was coming, um and you like scouted him right and you guys were this wasn't for tournament right you guys were just playing in casuals is is that true yeah 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 and I can identify like with tacos that tacos on the table and everything yeah and I, I, I think that's something that people who have been around forever kind of forget sometimes it's like when you're like a new up and comer like a moment like that of just playing casuals against an established player like it's important to you and you're like man I want to I want to like fucking be ready. Uh, and then when you do succeed, uh, you know, in that environment, then you're like really happy. And yeah, it's just casuals, you know, whatever. But at the same time, like those casuals matter, you know, like I'm going to, mm-hmm. I'm going to try, you know, maybe to you, this is just casuals. You've been playing 20 <laughs> years. That's fine. I'm fucking playing. This is like, this is SBO, right? <laughs> yeah. I have watched all your footage of the last five years in preparation <laughs> for this moment. Hmm. Um, yeah, I don't think. I don't think I ever told Juan, you know, I was in person, like, you know, well, yeah, I was happy to have him there. I was like, you know, welcome, you know, have a seat. Yeah. <laughs> that was very have nice, very welcoming. <laughs> yeah. Like, please sit down. Yeah, I have all this... sit the fuck down. We're playing games right now. <laughs> so, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think it's really cool that you was excited to, to, you know, bring me the boy, like you said. Um, mm-hmm. Because he's a very old school player, right? Mm-hmm. And you that old school arcade mentality of like, you got to earn my respect. I remember like the first time I visited uh, SoCal, like I came out and I played everyone at uh, at Boiler at the time, and then he didn't come out. And then I, I did like I did you know, I did not not bad that first night, and he was watching on stream. And then he messaged me afterwards like, hey, let's go get tacos tomorrow, and then we'll play. And then like when I went to go get tacos with him, he told me like, yeah, I wasn't gonna come out for you. I didn't think you were worth my fucking time. <laughs> like some you know some guy from alaska is coming to visit. i don't care you know <laughs> and that's one of those moments where you know that's where you're like okay that's another aspect of upcoming it's like earning the respect or the attention of like the more established players like okay i better come out and play this guy um so it's cool that you were on Yee's radar very early like he's like bring me bring me resolve yeah it's very scary you know <laughs> very intimidating like mm-hmm. It's another, like, uh, I couldn't go. Like, if I could have, I would have. But, it, you know, there's that other side of it. Like, okay, like, do I actually deserve all this? Am I actually this good? I don't want to go and just get destroyed, which could, you know, very easily ha- happen. Like, just not put up a fight against anybody there. Mm-hmm. Like, what happens then? I don't know. Yeah. No, that <laughs> resonates really strongly with me because that's exactly how I felt visiting SoCal my first time. Um, you yeah. said like you were, you know, you were happy uh, to have someone there to talk for you because you're very quiet and you were kind of like Star. It sounds like you were Star Trek a little bit. Yeah, um, the Star Power responses. Yeah, and that was exactly my experience as well. Like when I went to Boiler the first time, since like what 2015 maybe, I was like not new, but you know, relatively new for the you know, I've been playing a few years online. But to me, these people were people that I had been watching on podcasts and and footage for years and to me they were gods right like and i was i was very quiet my first time i went to socal i didn't really talk that much to anyone unless people you know someone asked me a question i would answer it but i was like just like oh i don't i don't even know what to say to these people like what am i going to say to pyro lee you know (laughs) i don't know i don't know why don't you just shut the fuck up and just let them talk (laughs) um so no the exact same way uh, yeah i was yeah all this is resonating strongly with me this is exactly yeah (laughs) no i feel you it's really it's unbelievable because i mean we both probably you know, idolize probably the same people but i am you know i'm i came later so it's not just you know that your pyro release and and five star it's you know your lance ko's too so it's just and <laughs> you oh, know no. that that's what it was like being in colorado like jesus christ like i know all of you like you guys have no idea you guys taught me this game in one way or another you guys are my heroes mm-hmm. and you know when you'd be like hey you want to go and grab a burger i'm like yeah whatever sure mm-hmm. <laughs> and then inside i'm just like oh my god it's really funny uh and that's gonna be you someday in another five years you know uh <laughs> someone's gonna be like oh my god 
Rizal will eat a burger with me? <laughs> <laughs> He's a that... fucking jazzy champion. Oh. He won jazzy <laughs> six, you know. He <laughs> <laughs> Wow, he'll he'll eat the you know. Yeah, that's gonna that's how it is. So so how was your jazzy experience? How was it traveling for the finale? And you qualified, like right, you were already in top sixteen. Can you kinda walk me through like what, what that weekend looked like for you? Yeah, so I mean uh I guess because I got in two points, right? But I didn't know that that was going to happen. Like, I wasn't really accounting for it. I think that's sort of what was planned, right? Like, by by everybody else here in town, it was... Uh, I think that's what uh, Alex and Anselmo were saying. They were trying to get done. They were trying to get these events organized, get a ton of people. So I have a shot at getting there. Um, but I didn't... I didn't know it was actually going to happen. <laughs> like I, I had, I wanted to go, I, I wanted to win through an auto qualifier. I wanted to go to barcode so bad. Uh, uh, last year, I guess. I, I don't know. Um, mm -hmm. but, uh, couldn't do that. Um, and so then I was shooting for Arizona and I went to that. Um, and I didn't win. I, I, I don't remember what I placed there. I, I know I lost to James and and Rennick, I think. Strong or, players, yeah. Or I, I, yeah, I think Rennick sent me to losers, and then I tried getting as far as I could, and then I ran into James, and then I think Juan came in and and won the whole thing. But uh, so that happened. I, I I think I might have still got points for that. I don't know, but uh, came back to town. We were still doing our monthlies. And they were very fun. And sometimes we'd actually get people out. Like, uh, um, my friend Tony and his brothers, uh, Guitini, and I'm trying to remember the name of the other one. But they came down, I think, for the one, one of them. I can't remember. And I know, uh, Rod came down. Uh, I'm trying to remember. I, I don't know. But they, they were fun. And, a lot of people came out to them, so I got a ton of points. And then I, I, I qualified. I think I was uh, at the top for points or top three or something, um, which was crazy. Uh, and then, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I'm trying to remember the lead up to that because it, money has always been. Uh, an issue and even though I qualified I was like man I don't know if I have money for even just like lunch for those three days like let alone the uh, hotel and luckily uh, my friend Alex and um, Arcade Candy Co uh, were there for me and we shared a room and uh, a few family members uh, lent me some money for the trip and was able to make it out and uh <laughs> the experience was insane for like the second we got to our hotel um got to the hotel we were checking in and out from the elevator walks five star chris dad <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like uh, uh alex the machine <laughs> yes the legend dude the legend <laughs> yeah. of course they all walk out of the elevator and I know instantly who everybody is right there, but I'm just paralyzed. I'm like, what? Like Jesus Christ, <laughs> like we just got here and there they are, you know, legend. Um, and so I didn't really say anything. I, I sat there and was like, well, maybe they just, uh, you know, they'll just walk by, but they're walking by, uh, five star does a double take. Like, wait, like, <laughs> you know, and uh, he tells me to come with him, you know, and I, I go, and now I'm out uh, outside of the uh, hotel hanging out with Five Star and Krista and Alex the Machine. Uh, just already a really crazy um, experience. And I think we were talking about the, 
the I think the, the team tournament and what I thought about all that and he asked how I got so good like playing online he's like it just that doesn't make mm-hmm. sense <laughs> uh, and going into that I, you know I was thinking the same way I always do it's like he was talking about the team tournament what I thought and I thought I said oh like that uh uh, what was your guys' team name? <laughs> uh, uh, Naughty <laughs> America. Yeah, Naughty America. America. Yeah. Like, Nobody does oh, it. Man, like, Naughty, uh, yeah, that Naughty America team looks pretty insane. Mm. And sort of stopped me in my tracks and said, like, like no, they're not. They're fucking like, garbage. Like, <laughs> don't, don't, don't think that way. Like, like, if you think that way going in, like, you've already lost, you know, um, it, that was one of the sort of one of the bigger things I took away from that whole experience was everybody's sort of mindset going into it. You know, what, how to view the other players, how to view yourself for your best chance at, at winning, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and so, uh, I mean, that's the first time I have heard something, you know, about how to view the tournament. And I'm like, well, this is, Yi Wang, five star, like who am I to say that you know this isn't the way? I'm like, okay, so fuck everybody. <laughs> like we're going <laughs> in. <laughs> we're gonna win this. <laughs> um uh what was the the first day the uh the team tournament? I can't uh, remember. I think there was that the, sounds right, right? Yeah, I think Friday night was the teams, right? And then Saturday was pools, and then Sunday was uh top sixteen. That sounds possible. That sounds true. right. I was pretty, yeah. I was pretty drunk, but I think that's it. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Tell us, tell us about that whole team. You know, so we were actually were not your guys' closest call. Uh, you know, you guys kind of fucked us up in grand finals. Not gonna lie. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah we got kind of fucked. We, thanks, I thanks, got out Lance. Coached. Thanks, Lance. I got out. So yeah, we, we joked right afterward, like, oh, I got out coached by Yi. Ye. He's been doing this for way long. You know, his coaching. Because you know, like, I was like trying to you know we were we were going back and forth and banter and i was like okay if i can just get ye to go first then i go first maybe you know and i, I we had like game plan like okay who who on our team can beat resolve well not ray yeah. so <laughs> we're not gonna <laughs> save ray for that. uh and yeah instantly like you know i just like uh it was like me and amir first round and then he wins and then yeah, yeah, yeah. And then from there our team just I think the Yuki beats Amir, right? But then, yeah, how does I, Yuki lose? I think Juan fucked up a lot of us. Oh, like, Juan oh, destroyed yeah. our whole team. Yeah, That's Juan, right. Juan fucked all of us. I think. Yeah. 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 Oh, that was Juan is a superpower. Yeah, that was definitely a. Uh, that could have been a more competitive set, I think. You know, but <laughs> due to some coaching decisions, it was not. Um, so, but you guys had a really close set with uh, the North Carolina team, right? It's like the North Carolina yeah. mommy Ben hybrid team. Yeah, I, Makotas were giving us some real trouble. Um, I, I can't remember which one is is uh is Knuckle Dust the the Makoto? Yeah, yeah, Knuckle uh, Dust think, and Mommy were the two Makotas on that team. Yeah, I I know that Knuckle Dust like went through a few people, right? Mm-hmm. I think he beat Chris and and Juan, and I think I I I went up, and I think I. I can't remember if I beat him or not. I I know I won at least once, <laughs> but I think I got him. But then I I lost to a young. That's is that's Ben, right? Car Car Palm, I think. Yeah, yeah, Ben. Yeah, Car yeah, Palm, Car- Ben. Yeah, shouts to Ben. Love that. Dude. Yeah, good player. Yeah. Um, yeah. I I mean, that whole thing was kind of. I, I'm trying to remember. Didn't I? Uh, I remember playing Eat. I don't remember if that was a. I want to say that was a team tournament. Okay. Right. I. I, I don't know. I don't remember what team he was on, but. Uh, yeah, he, he that said was, that. He said that was so. It was Eat. Yeah. Eat's that was very fun. Human being on Earth. I love Eat, dude. <laughs> yeah. Best human. Mm-hmm. I was waiting for somebody to sort of try and get in my head, you know, because mm-hmm. it's. A great plan. It's a very great plan, <laughs> especially that day, you know. And so, I, I don't remember what he was saying. Just kind of like, I think I tried to cheese him out or something with some like lame dash through or whatever. I don't know. 
like I try to do something, and that whole like oh, like nope, like that shit don't work offline. <laughs> you yeah. Know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Famous like, words okay. everyone has uttered. Yeah. Uh, well, I was waiting, waiting for that one, <laughs> but I just I don't know. I, I, uh, you know, did my thing. I tried to just uh, stay, stick to what I I know, and I think I was able to was able to beat him. Uh, he's really great. Like, I don't I don't want to try and frame this like, oh, that was with like a negative experience. Like, that was great. Uh, mm-hmm. Uh, having him next to me on the couch, shit talking, and then talking to him afterwards. He's very, you know, he's a great guy, very nice. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I mean, that was. I, I feel like I learned a lot, um, more about the mental side of their strike than anything else from that. Uh, from the that weekend, mm-hmm. um, hearing everybody's perspective on, on how they approach, tournament and. You know, five stars coaching. He he was. I feel like he was like coaching me the whole time. Um, there is. I, I I don't think it was the night of teams. It might be. Oh, I stayed there like really late. I, it's like till like two or three in the morning. And uh, he was just sort of trying to drill that idea of like not being scared and uh if you're gonna die at least like be dying doing what you wanted to do instead of you know the, one of the worst feelings ever is losing to lance while i have two bars like <laughs> <laughs> just sucked sure so i was like okay like i understand the other side of this right like that's how i lose uh sometimes is i just i i die without really having resisted or trying to push my my game plan really um, and he had made sure I, I, I felt like we were trying to, it started off as trying to beat Yuki, I think, cause he, he was on, he was on the cab and everybody, and, and Lance, you were there for that, right? Weren't you like the, the, yeah. uh, that night. Yeah. Yeah. That was like the Yuki versus the world cabinet that night. He was enforcing it strictly. Like if you yeah. are, uh, uh, somebody who needs to be on this cab and get the fuck off right the old yeah, uh, big boy I, cab i remember him distinctly like frog try to go up there and he's like get the fuck out of here get the fuck out of here get the fucking play on this cab it's like damn okay and an old a taste of old uh ffa yeah uh yeah taste and, of the uh, old days i guess fucking ye like all right we're about to see amir and you can go at it like these are two fucking alphas right here boys like <laughs> two alphas. everyone just sit the fuck down shut up just watch the fucking games all right like all right, yeah, got it, bro. I'm in. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, that, that's what I remember is uh, everybody trying to beat him, and I don't know, I I don't know who ended up doing it, but I I just remember he kept putting me on there and was there telling me, you know, the same, the same thing, sort of just coping me, um, and I feel like eventually it clicked. I. I don't know. I I remember doing. I I remember feeling okay with with my performance after that night. Like okay, like I, I and I think I understand now. Um, it, it clicked that night. Uh, and probably I don't think it transferred to the top sixteen. But... Yeah. So that that was actually our next question there. Like yeah. Uh... You, you called out Yuki, the bi- the big dick play there, dude. Like, I think Yuki's, like, one of the last people that pe- people pick on that, and you fucking went straight for yeah. him, so... Uh, I would never pick him, so... Yeah, so, so, so kind of talk to us about your mindset when it came to, like, all right, fuck it, like, first pick, let's go Yuki. Like, tell me what was going through your head and, like, why you specifically picked that that player in that matchup. Um, I just really... I, I did feel like I had a chance, right? Like, I don't think it was out of the realm of possibility for me to take it. But maybe not very likely, I don't know. But uh, we had played a little bit before that, and I felt like I did, okay, maybe, you know, <laughs> shouldn't have gauged, like, shouldn't have made a decision based on that. But another thing is just, I think, how I view the whole uh, tournament, the, the tournament format, right? Like, 
if I am going to win, even if I pick, you know, somebody else in the bracket, like I'm going to have to face these guys eventually. Mm -hmm. Like I don't want to win because I got an easy path, an easier path. I don't want to, I don't want it to be a fluke or anything like that. Like I want to win because I was the strongest player that day. And so it really doesn't make a difference whether I play Yuki now, like round, you know, two, three, four, like I'm probably going to play him, probably going to have to play Exodus, you know, like there's just, it's just how it is. Um, I, I think that maybe that's not a super popular <laughs> um, uh, way that people view it, but it's just, it, it it's what feels the most right when I think about uh, tournaments, it's like I want to crush everybody. I want to be the best that day. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I picked you. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> I feel like for the first five seconds, at least, you got to give me that, right? Like the first five seconds were pretty yeah. good. Yeah. <laughs> you know? No, I uh, I love that mentality, and that's pretty much... It's, it's funny, like, all the things you're saying, I'm like, yeah, I used to, you know, I thought that when I was in this position. I think that's exactly right. I think, from my perspective, like, it's not that... It, it doesn't matter whether you go 0-2 in top 16, or you get 4th in top 16. Basically, all that matters is whether you win or not. Um, if you're going to win, if you deserve to win, you're going to be every player there. If you can't do that, then what does it matter, right? Like, uh, I called out... Uh, Nika one year, you know, and I was like, do I think I can beat Nika? Like, unlikely. That's not a match that usually goes that well for me. <laughs> but yeah, like, I feel like it, when it comes down to something like wanting to deserve it and recognizing that they're really, you know, maybe this is not strictly true and it comes down to perspective, but I, you know, like what they used to say, if you're not first, you're last. There's first place. You ain't else first, you're last. Yeah, that's like, you know, mentality. that's yeah. a real, that's a real, you know, like, does it, you know, if you got fourth or if you got 13th, what's the difference? Well, the difference is the bracket that you ran into, you know, maybe you could have beat some other people who were, you know, different parts of that bracket. You just never ran into them. So just go for the yeah. win. Yeah, and I mean, even with the Jazzy Top 16, right? Like, everyone there is there for a reason, right? Like, it's killers. There's no easy... E easy route to the you know the championship so like fuck it I me mean, as well go with the hardest person first and set the the precedence right so yeah i mean <clears throat> i try to not say if you're not first you're last because i know like <laughs> i don't know i don't want to uh 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 a quote from talladega nights to be you know, sort of attached, attached to me. Dude, dude, that's my favorite movie. I quote that shit all the time, dude. All, all the best competitive mindsets come from terrible movies. Yep. For instance, dodgeball. If you can dodge a wrench, I'm you can dodge a ball. ball. I've been quoting this for 10 years. <laughs> yeah, play Urians online. If you can dodge a wrench, you can dodge a ball. <laughs> but it's it's true, you know, like, I... I... I, uh, I felt like... It was... Uh, kind of off topic but hearing dan talk about his first sort of his uh his first jazzy tournament it sounded very familiar you know like oh this is that's kind of crazy um it sounds very similar i, I think maybe uh i don't know we, we we're probably we come from different places uh, how we view it but how we view the whole tournament thing but we seem to have had a very similar first tournament like uh, my whole thing was proving that I belong more more than anything. Like, maybe it was wrong for me to sort of think, uh, like, okay, realistically, I'm probably not going to win this year. Maybe that held me back. Maybe, uh, I don't know. But more than anything, my goal was I want to show up. I want to do my best. And I want to feel like I belong. Like, I'm not just an online player. Like I put a lot of work in, like I want to, uh, to show that you know I want I want my play to reflect that, um, <laughs> and maybe just the tournament performance doesn't show that, but I am happy with everything else that happened that weekend that I feel good and I feel like I I accomplished that. <laughs> yeah, no, I definitely agree, and I think everyone who played you in casuals that weekend walked away being like, oh, he's fucking good. Um, 
Yeah, and I I think you totally yeah, and and I agree with you know like okay, you went zero and two in top sixteen. This happens half of the people. Wait, is that right? Do half the people go zero and two? No, four people go zero and two, and then four. Okay, I understand how brackets work. I promise. But anyway, <laughs> it's not that easy to get wins in top sixteen, and so you know okay, you went zero and two. Your losses were Yuki, right? Um, Yuki's like one of the best players ever in American, you know, outside Japan ever. And then you lost to Tommy. Of course, Yuri and Chun's a hard matchup. I've seen you beat Tommy before and, you know, like in online tournaments and stuff. That's definitely doable. Um, but the way you played, I thought, was very good. The way that you felt in casuals, I thought, very strong. Yeah, to me, you mission accomplished. If your mission was, let's prove that I belong, uh, yeah, more than did so. And so now the next time you go, now it's not about having to prove that anymore. It's about, okay, now let's go fucking beat all these guys. Yeah. Um, it's sort of funny um, losing to Tommy. He's really he's a he's a, a great guy. Um, it was it was fun meeting him in person after uh, you know playing and talking this so online for the longest time. And I was the other I was watching the episode you guys did with Renick, and I think it was Renick. <laughs> And uh, I think you asked who his rival was or something, and I he's talked to me about it before too. That it's Juan. Mm-hmm. Juan is his bracket demon. Um, okay. I haven't played. Uh, I, I was watching that, and my my girlfriend was uh, somewhere in the room. She heard it and whatever, and and she asked me, like, did I have anybody like that? And I thought about it, and I was like, I don't think so. Like, I don't really, I haven't played in very many tournaments, and I don't really feel like I have a rivalry with anyone specific. Um, and then it occurred to me, the closest person is probably Tommy. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> because the, I mean, I, uh, the biggest, like, I've played in Stupid Striker, like, I don't know, a handful of times. Um, but the big thing they did was the Summit. And at the summit, Tommy is who I lost to, and it was brutal. It was, I, I, I think it was uh, first to three, and I was up two, and he came back three, and it was devastating. Because I mean, it, it's a whole nother topic, right? Like, um, how your sort of, how much work you put into that sort of thing, like when it comes to ego and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, and I remember that being a hard pill to swallow um even if it was an online tournament you know i was like oh my god like i almost had it It was right there um and then losing to him again (laughs) at the finale i was like oh this is familiar like i'm at least glad he didn't do the uh the two-step uh emote that he does (laughs) um but it's nothing like this is, I guess, kind of off topic because really he's not like mm, a rival or anything. It's just something kind of funny. Uh, I thought I'd bring up because I don't feel like I have any anybody that but that's probably the closest thing I've lost to. You know, I've lost to him in bigger sort of uh, higher stakes tournament more than I've lost to anybody else just because I. I really haven't played in that many, and it just so happened that he was there every sure. time. And that matchup was not easy, right? We talked to Caesar on the previous episode about Chun Yuri, and uh, I don't know if you watched that one, but yeah, like basically my perception of it, and it's you know mostly Yuki's perception that I'm just copy pasting. But like you know, if Chun Li does walk back low medium kick, that's where uh, Yuri really like well, Yuri doesn't have an answer for that, right? And when I play you, right, it's like. I'm going to fucking drag this out. I'm just going <laughs> to low medium kick over and over. And you're not going to do shit. You know, like if I feel like, okay, if I can stop Urien's tackles. So if I know when tackles coming, if I kind of smell them, then either it's like parry, back throw, or it's like Matador, right? Jump back fierce yeah. uh, to beat the tackle. There's not too many. Like Urien, when you play super clean and cheap as Shen Li, uh, it's very difficult. So that's not an easy matchup. Yeah, it, I feel like it might be. I'm still, you know, trying to work on it. It's very, very challenging. Uh, I feel like in the last maybe year or so, I've gotten a lot better at the Yun matchup, mm-hmm. like considering 
uh, you know, the upper tier of characters, I feel like Yelena, I've gotten better at. And I've gotten maybe a little bit better at the Chun-Li matchup, but it, I just, something doesn't seem to click uh, when it comes to offense, I guess. Um, yeah, I, I find that very challenging, and uh, I'm still trying to beat the whip throw, you know, tick, uh, light kick, <laughs> uh, crouch light kick tick into uh, either car throw or crouch medium kick. I remember the first few times I played Lance, and I asked for advice, that was, I think, one of the bigger things. And it's, it's still pestering me, <laughs> you know? Mm. Yeah, I mean, I remember telling you that at the time. I was like, okay, the reason I beat you, you know, consistently, like, the number one reason is just baiting whiff grab. Because uh, you, I feel yeah. like you late standing tech often. That's one of your most common. Is that, does that sound right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. And so it's like, okay, if I just do a really good shimmy right in front of his face, whiff grab's coming, I can super it. Uh, and that was a defensive habit of yours that was like the easiest to exploit. Uh, of course, when we talk about that, that's just in general good, right? It's not like, oh, Resolve doesn't understand how to beat uh, Chun-Li low forward or Karath throw. The, the, the reality is that that's just really fucking good, and that's why she's the best character. People have been losing <laughs> to that for 20 years. Um, but I, I, I noticed, like, because it wasn't just Chun-Li, right? I would, I would do the same uh like you know same same idea same con- you can do that same concept with any, any you know a lot of characters uh yeah baiting that whiff grab in the same way and i noticed that you started varying your defense more um you would do a lot of knee drops out early uh which i think was a really great adaptation and i think that's what it is like yurian's defense again this is speaking just from playing against yurian because i my yurian's terrible so i don't have any insight from the <laughs> yurian perspective um but it seems like yurian's defensive options are difficult to work with right like he if they're not going to lose to whiff headbutt back throw, then there's a lot of blocking involved, and it's not that easy to super jump out of the corner with him. So defense with him in the corner, difficult. And of course, you're always looking for the opportunity to turn things around and be, okay, can I just parry into back throw with headbutt in the back kneel? Can I find something like that? Uh, yeah, but it's not easy. Uh, and that is one of the most common ways to beat Yurian is either to, to bait whiff grab or to walk up down parry, catch crouch attack, and then boom, you know, or just wait for the whiff with uh with headbutt and then you know punish that as well uh yeah so what are your thoughts on that i mean i imagine that all rings true what do you think yeah i mean it's really like one of the it, it's really uh, it's just evil really <laughs> <laughs> like i remember going into training when i was like okay like i had just played you i'm like jesus christ like i keep getting hit by this i'm like okay Seriously, it's time to sit down and see what are my answers to this. And it just frustrated me more. I was like, okay, so if if I smell the throw is coming and I try to, I don't know, like the best option really is to knee drop. That's what I found so far. Like even if I like feel it in my bones that a throw is coming, there isn't a real way for me to uh, take advantage of that and turn it around. Because if I had but her throw animation goes under it, which is just beautiful. It's a beautiful part of the game. <laughs> and I don't know. I, I just remember that 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 situation. I went to to go and find an answer for it, and it, I got my answer, and it was not really a a nice one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean that. Yeah, I remember thinking at the time, like, okay, for now I can be resolved because I can make him whiff throw. Okay, I can really exploit that. Uh, when he fixes that, you know, down. When his defense, it's like, that's just not a weakness anymore. How do I beat him? I have no idea. Uh, we're just going to stop playing, I think, is the plan. <laughs> <I'm> just, <laughs> we're just going to stop playing, and we'll never we'll never have to find out. Uh, well, I, I'm still still trying to figure it out, so mm-hmm. don't have to leave just yet. <laughs> um, okay, uh, next question. Um, so, And we kind of touched on this a little bit, but maybe we can delve into it a little more. Um, what has your experience, because, and this is a two-parter in a way, um, what's your experience been as a young player in a community of old people, and also as a new player in a community of people that have played for 10 to 20 years? Um, what's been your experience, like, leveling up, engaging with these people, you know, slowly kind of like, like you said earlier, checking names off the list, like beating better and better people? Uh, I'd like to hear some, you know, about the salt of people <laughs> losing to you. That's always fun. <laughs> Every player who's, like, come up, 
has, you know, faced that kind of resistance. Um, yeah, just tell me about your whole experience as a young person in the community and as a new player leveling up in the community. Um, so I feel like I, I didn't really have a ton of, uh, resistance from the older players because I think I understood from a very, like very early on, like this isn't really new, like a player coming and asking questions and whatever, like I'm sure all these top players who have been here forever, they've probably gotten it a million times and maybe one or two of those people actually kept playing and used the advice. Um, I understood that for the most part, like uh, my, my friend Alex, he is a Buki player, so he tried to ask Tenren for advice. And Tenren said, I don't give out advice, I give out ass whoopings. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like it. <laughs> and I was like, okay. Like, I just automatically assumed, like, that's probably the mentality of most of these older, like, the, these veterans. Um, which is not really entirely true. I think well, I've met a lot of um, really strong players that have been very... Um, they, they help me a lot, and they're happy to, to give advice. Um, uh, def I definitely... It, people have gotten salty losing... You know that sort of it's online online Urian, sure. Uh, which I always got annoyed by because I, I at some point I was like I, I didn't want to um, sort of accidentally encourage bad habits, right? Like you have somebody uh, a Urian who. Uh, I don't know, does dash throw a lot, I guess. I don't know, something like that. Mm -hmm. But all this works, like, almost every single time right here in this spot. So then they take that uh, offline, and they just get torn up for it. I, I was aware that things like that could happen. Mm -hmm. And so I specifically uh, tried not to do that unless I felt like it was maybe the best choice. Like, I would do the same thing if I was playing on a cab right now. <laughs> and so then when I when I, I feel like I won by playing smart and then getting like oh it's just online Urian bullshit like uh I'm like oh well okay, you know, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Um I don't know, I, I never really let it uh take up too much of my of my time though. Uh as for like other newer players I don't, I don't really know. I mean, for a second, when I was start first started out, there was a, a server for, the uh, I forget what the age range was. It was probably like thirteen to, seventeen or something. I can't remember. Jandor made it, and there's a lot of new players, and it was cool, um, being around other people who were, were around the same age and, you know, played the same game, but uh. The, the the difference in skill was just massive. And not even just the difference in skill, but, like, I guess how much they liked Third Strike, right? Sure. Like, I feel like most people who have put, like, a lot of the greatest players, right, have put a, a lot of time into the game, and it's really nice talking to those people because it's kind of ridiculous, right? Like, you tell somebody who doesn't get it, and they're like, they they get look at you like you're crazy, right? Like, what? <laughs> how many people play this game again? Mm -hmm. Um. And so, uh, I don't know. I, I, I maybe I'm forgetting things, but I remember it being pretty, pretty welcoming for the most part. I think, um, if I didn't really agree with something, uh. Uh, I guess a uh, older player said I just I just disagreed, but I didn't really go out and say anything, right? Like I I don't feel like I'm very uh, a very uh, abrasive person, I guess. Like I, I feel like you can we can disagree, we can think different things, it's fine. Um, 
there's just uh, there's certain things uh, like how uh, a lot of uh, not even not like the top players but just players who have been around for a while but they're and they're decent right but not uh, uh, at the top titans right <laughs> um, there's a lot a lot of them and um, a lot of the views are just kind of uh, I don't know what the word would be <laughs> I don't really want to start it being I feel no, like no. I'm <laughs> 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 I think I understand what you mean, though. You like, are you? You're, you're just, you seem like you're saying, like, uh, you know, because you know, my impression has been that a lot of top players, like, to become a top player, you often need to have a really good competitive mentality. That doesn't mean you have to have identical mentalities to each other, uh, but there are certain markers of people that are like really top guys in terms of like, you know, how much time they put into the game, obviously, and like, were they good at improving and using their time well, but also. It's like the way that they approach things and their attitudes towards certain things, right? You see, like a lot of overlap there. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I like. <laughs> I like that uh, you said like you don't feel the need to, to argue. I think that's wise. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think a lot of uh, uh, on third strike arguments over the years have been about things that. People were never going to change their minds about, you know, so it's kind of a waste. So, you know, like, I think you're right. Just listen to everyone's point of view. You don't have to agree with everything. You're, you know, not everyone's on the same page about everything. Uh, but then just let that shit go. Like, you know, we got better shit to do than argue on the internet about things in a game for, you know, 200 old people. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> I don't really... I, I realized halfway through that there's not really an interesting way to con continue that conversation without sort of um, uh, doing some sort of call out, right? Like, sure. this opinion is stupid, and I don't agree. <laughs> this opinion is stupid, and you suck, and I'll prove <laughs> yeah. it, right? That's, that's where you got to be willing to go if you actually want to have all those arguments, right? You can just be, yeah. you can just be Kang. Kang loves arguing, so... <laughs> If you ever feel the passion to argue, you can be, you can do that. All right. Um, go so, ahead. Yeah. So, kind of moving on. Um, are you are you going to be traveling for Third Strike this year? I know you mentioned that you got a new job, you got a new girlfriend, twenty years old. You know, life kind of comes at you <laughs> quick. Uh, are you going to be traveling this year at all for Third Strike? Or? Um, it maybe. Uh, I'm not really entirely sure yet. I think it could be possible. Um. I don't know that I'd be able to really travel a lot. So I kind of have a sort of um, sort of list of places I want to go the most, right? So if I can afford to travel maybe once this year, then I'll go to the top. Um, I'd like to do uh, Jazzy again and uh, do all I, I don't know if I, I'll be able to. Right now, I don't know. Um, I'm still putting in as much time as I can to uh, getting better and everything. Uh, right now, I'm not able to really do much. Like, I've gone to LA a couple times because it's not really, that's not too bad, you know? <laughs> Only a yeah. couple hours away. Um, what I will say is that if I am able to travel at all out of state this year, it will be to DFW. That's mm. at the top of my list. Nice. Okay. It's yes. it's at the top above the finale and and that sort of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Let me know if you're if you're gonna fly out to Dallas. Just give me a heads up. You're welcome to crash here. No, no big deal. Yeah. Just let me know. I'll pick you up from the airport. All that stuff. I think the Austin qualifiers in what March would that be something like you would want to fly out for? But in I March. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> don't don't invite him to the qualifier, Ray. We're trying to win. We don't want. <laughs> oh yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. Give me a heads up if that's something you're you're uh, wanting to do. Yeah, I can pick you up from the airport. You're welcome to crash here. We'll take you to Austin. All that fun stuff. I got cabs at the yeah. house, so, so yeah. Just give me a heads up. Let me know. So. I appreciate it. Uh, I, I've talked about it like uh, probably a, a couple times because it, it comes up right, like whether or not I'm going to travel. My answer has been the same. 
uh, what I said right now. Is, I don't know. Your guys' scene is just awesome. It looks mm. looks uh, really great. Love to make it up. Yeah, it's fun. It's fun. We got a lot of players here. Like everybody plays. Everybody's very passionate about it. We all try to travel together for for tournaments. So like uh, yeah. when, next week we're going down to Austin's just monthly event, and I think we're going like ten, eleven of us deep. So it's just like all of us traveling together, having a good time. So yeah, you're welcome That's here sick. anytime, man. Just let me know. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, so that's pretty much all the questions we had for you, but we do have some questions from the chat, and uh, and then we have some quick rapid fire questions for you at the end. Um, okay. Okay. First question is from Joyous, and you kind of already covered some of these questions, so I'm just going to throw them at you anyway. Um, when did you start playing? Um, you are one of my inspirations for this game, and I believe you are going to be the goat of NA someday. <laughs> uh, that means a lot. Um, uh, I can't really remember i want to say it's somewhere between i i want to say 2018 maybe or a little earlier a little later i can't really remember i always i always get it mixed up and i feel bad because like i i'm sure i've given mixed answers i just really cannot remember um and so you know i'll be playing or something and then i'll hear like in the background oh he's only been playing for like three years i'm like that doesn't really sound right like yeah. giving, my, giving myself a little bit too much credit. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's been. <laughs> I don't know, but um. Yeah, I, I guess I'll say 2018. I I I go off of um when my Twitter account was created. Okay. That's how that's, I give the answer now. Yeah, um, that's, that's interesting, right? Like, when did you start playing versus when did you like start playing? Right? Like, uh, I started in 2011 playing on Xbox Live with a Mad Cats pad. Uh, my first tournament I traveled to was 2015. Uh, and those are, you know, and those are both valid, I mean, valid starting points to some extent for you, right? Like when did you first touch the game might be different from like, when were you really like grinding this game and, you know, becoming good or whatever? Yeah. Um, and like you said, Joy is asked the question, right? Yep. And, uh, I'm very, like, I, I remember Joy's has always been. Sort of, because I, I said I have this list, right? Like, okay, these people started around the same time, whatever. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, I kind of went down the list, and I'm like happy, whatever. But I would, I played Joyous. And I was like, wait a minute, like, okay, yeah, sure, I did well, but this, there's something else here. It, it's crazy to me to hear that uh, I should have motivated him at all when it comes to third strike. It's really, really great to hear because I'm really excited specifically for Joyous. He's just already really strong it's kind of scary you know yes i agree yeah yeah <laughs> another player who uh yeah you know like i said up. earlier when you've been around a long time you you get used to like okay i, I kind of know who i can beat and can't beat for the most part uh, but yeah like players like you enjoy us it's like oh like okay a new challenger has arrived right <laughs> yeah yeah and joy is go- you're going to frosty in a couple weeks too i get to hang out with joyous that's gonna be sick so that's awesome. Stoked for that. Stoked for that. All right. So uh, next chat question. This one's from Nika Ko. What video turned him into an RX fanboy? Um. It was. It was that. Be- I I can't remember who made it. It's just like a compilation. It's the best of RX. I I watched that, and. I guess it could have really been anybody, right? Like, I could have got a best of any Urian player doing anything that wasn't the garbage I was doing. Uh-huh. And I'll be like, okay, I am now Rue Resolve. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, his his style is just always just been, it just amazes me still today. Like, it's not easy at all to emulate. There's only one of him, like, um, it still is just blows my mind watching him play these like the best players of each of these all these characters and he's just he's winning and he's just very creative and he's uh I I, I want to be able to play like him. Um I probably play more similarly to a Rue or someone like that. He is able to take that defense 
with a very uh, sort of creative, explosive offense. That it, it's just it's a beautiful uh, combination that I am still trying to <laughs> emulate. You know, okay. it, it, he just has a way. Here's my here's my question. Um, so, so you, so it's a, you know, and maybe and let me know if I'm barking up the wrong tree here. So it sounds like kind of like so something that I always thought. I'll just I'll, I'll compare it back to something I've you know, uh, something I've always thought about Chun Li is like okay, there's like character players who like take this character, who like the logical conclusion of the character. Maybe a player like Mochi, who I feel Mochi is a very logical, very strong Chun Li, and then I feel like players like Riki Maru, Nuki Mov. It almost like they elevated the character, like they pushed past the limits of the character, and they really just like showed like okay their player skill and like this is the beyond the beyond, right? And it sounds like what you're saying, like you know, like RX is that player, like to to have that kind of creative offense. He's like the beyond the beyond that you want to strive to get there, but that's really hard to emulate. Yeah, I, yeah, I think that's exactly right. A good way of putting it. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Uh, so yeah, what's the what's the plan to get to RX level? Uh, how do you how do you even practice uh, that? Do you have any ideas? Oh man, I, I uh, what I've been doing lately is just sort of playing out of my comfort zone, taking parts like comfortable like I'm comfortable doing certain things and uncomfortable doing other things, but I feel like I need to try everything, and it, it might be uncomfortable at first, but I, I don't know. It just it seems like the right thing to do. Mm-hmm. So I'm very comfortable sitting back, um, playing very patiently. So recently I've been trying to uh, maybe get out of that and stand my ground a little bit more and uh, maybe try and sort of, uh, I guess, force my outfits in the way that I wouldn't normally. Um and then I started playing other characters like Yun Neutral is very different um, than Yurian's. And I, I'm just trying to experiment with as much, uh, as many different uh, aspects of Third Strike, I guess, as I can. And maybe, <laughs> maybe something will click. There's just, when I watch him play, I'm like, oh, I wouldn't have done that in a million years. Mm-hmm. Like, I, it just wouldn't have come to my mind, and and he did it, and that's why he's him, and that's why he won. <laughs> yeah, I love I love both those answers, and I think you're exactly on the right track. Um, there is so there's this old thread. I don't know if you ever read this thread. I you know a lot of like resources were just posted in one place ten years ago, and you know I don't know if they're like even people think about this anymore. But there's this thread on SRK called Five Star Teaches Third Strike, and he described exactly what you just described, where he's like, okay. Around, I think he says like 2007 or something. I knew I was really good at uh, attacking, you know, Oki attack or something, and and beating people that way. I can beat people by attacking them, uh, but I was really bad at other parts of the game. And I basically just forced myself for a whole year to like. He said like only beat them with zoning moves, right? And uh, I don't think exactly like that's what you're describing. Like, okay, I already know I'm great at playing defensive, being really hard to hit, you know. Taking Yuri in that approach, you know, very classical, you know, Yuri in approach, just like fucking build meter, don't get hit, abuse your Aegis and win. Um, but pushing yourself outside your comfort zone, being comfortable with losing because you did that, but knowing that at the end of that journey, that is going to open up new dimensions for you. I think that's exactly right. And then the other part you said about trying other characters, I think that's exactly the right ballpark too. I mean, I've definitely been a proponent of learning other characters because I think there's some stuff. You know, there's like there's like character skill and third strike skill, and and some aspects of the overall game are emphasized by a character and others are not, and I think that's a great way to broaden your horizons. It's like okay, play other characters because they kind of just show you like oh like you know maybe this wasn't that important for Yurian, but it is important for this character. And now that I'm developing that skill, okay, now I can take it back to Yurian, and now like I've got this more well-rounded third strike skill set. Yeah. Yeah, I think um, those are great. I think you're on the right track. And even if it doesn't turn me into RX, I think it'll still probably be uh, worthwhile and and uh, uh, be a positive uh, influence on my on my Yuri. And maybe uh, I don't have to be an RX. Maybe I can just maybe I can just be resolved and and one day you know 
to be talked about the same way. Yeah, that's a, no, that's a great, that's a great mindset. I like it. Uh, okay, next question. Uh, Danka <laughs> asked, "Are you looking forward to completing the Third Strike player arc by becoming an alcoholic?" Uh, and then Eat <laughs> later mentioned maybe weed will unlock. Do you have any uh, plans for substance <laughs> usage in your future? Um. Uh. I don't think so. Uh, good. Good. Like, good. I like that I don't, good. Good. That's a that's a correct it's a, answer. It's just, it just, there's just nothing really for me there. I'm sure, um, I have I've barely ever I've maybe had like a couple sips of alcohol. It's just it doesn't taste good, um, and that's the big thing for me. I don't know. Maybe that it's a uh, kind of maybe it sounds silly, but it's really. Uh, what it what it comes down to for me and um, there's all you know a whole growing up growing up it's just a whole lot of that um, and the the and the weed thing so that that sort of maybe has some sort of influence on why I don't really do it but um, I don't know I, I guess uh, maybe I might be open to substance abuse maybe sometime <laughs> in the future but uh, oh no no no, no yeah. it's not. <laughs> <laughs> no no um, stuff no. abuse ends well. <laughs> Winners don't but, do drugs. Uh, that used to be in the thing, Yeah, so. yeah, but before the the arcade, what is it like Marvel vs. Capcom 1? I think it says that or something. Like winners don't use drugs or some shit. Maybe the TMNT <laughs> game. So Yeah, don't I, don't drink. It just makes you worse at third strike. That's just a fact. Uh, in my head it, a, it makes me better at third strike, but on paper I, not so a, much. A funny thing. Yeah, I uh I went to boiler room, like might be I don't know. I I went, and you know, there's a lot of they smoke a whole lot, you know. Yes, yes, they and, do. Uh, and um, I just had the greatest time there. I didn't smoke. I didn't do any of it. But um, I left, and then I came, I was back in town, and I got dropped off at my um my girlfriend's house, and I came in, and I was like, I just. I I still just really feel I had an excellent time. It was very, uh, I was very just very happy as being around all those guys. I I felt sort of more out of my shell than I was the first time just because I'm around them more. Um, and she said, "You have the most. You smell like weed. It's so strong. Like I smelled <laughs> it when you came in the house. Like you have to be contact high. You know, you have had to have gotten contact high." And I was like, no, I really just think that I'm very at peace right now. I'm very yeah, like this. Yeah. That was great. <laughs> and I feel so like, relaxed. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, no, I don't know. This time was different than the others. She's, you know, it's very um, adamant that it was probably, you know, it was the weed. And I still disagree. I think it's just being around great friends. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, it's something that I've thought about, I guess. I was like, well, maybe... What if it wasn't friendship that was making me feel so great? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, de- it's definitely the friendship for sure, for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm like high, uh, high on friends. I mean, like <laughs> yeah. I'll say, like uh, like women and girlfriends, they don't understand. Like, there's no other people that I can talk to about this shit, right? Like, I, and trust me, I've tried talking to him about my wife before. Like, can you fucking believe this guy just woke up, hit this fucking <laughs> button? She's like, what are you even talking about right now? I'm like, just listen, all right? Like, you know, I'm fucking up this much life. He wakes up Perry's with this dumb shit. I lose. And she's like, I, I, I can't comprehend what you're telling me right now. So that's what I need the boys for. Like, I got to go to them and fucking say, like, yeah, this happened. And they understand. They get it, right? So, yeah, it, it's probably the friendship. It's probably the friendship. Um, yeah. And I, I joke a lot. I, I guess I should probably say something because i joke a lot about yuri and being complete garbage and i hate this game and i uh, cannot yeah. wait to be taken away from it right no i my love for the game is i feel at heart is a, a pure love for the game and whether or not you know the reason i have put and continue to put so much time into it is healthy or not i mean you know who knows right everybody has different reasons for playing so much but uh yeah my girlfriend is very uh very supportive and she uh holds on to a lot of the stuff i talk about surprisingly well like um 
I remember explaining the whole uh, anti-air mind game, right? That whole thing. Okay, all right. Uh, and at the time, I, you know, I was like, okay, well, like, I just talked for like 30 minutes straight about what could happen in just that one situation. Um, anyways, time for bed. I go to sleep, whatever. We go out to some third strike meeting or whatever. And I hear her explaining it to somebody else who's behind me, like watching. I think I'm sure I was playing uh, uh, Renob or something because I I think NPRs are very, they, they show up a lot in that matchup. I, I think Yuri yep. and Dudley are um, very important. And I was like, you know, it was just cool, cool to hear. Um, I, I, yeah, I just want to clear that up. I, I, I love <laughs> the game. Uh, Urian is garbage. That wasn't a lie. Um, <laughs> yeah. um, uh, do you remember that time that I posted? Like, I, I made a fucking spreadsheet, and it's like, this is how many times Urian has made pre co op top eight. The answer is zero. Yes. Yeah, I, I wiped that from my memory. <laughs> no i agree um and I, I that's actually that hits upon something that we haven't really talked about too much on on our previous episodes but i think it's important um right obviously if you look at third strike and you know it's been around 20 years and the community is like it's not small it's, you know, it's a niche game you know relative to some other games you could be playing but and so if you look at it you know on its face you would say why would i spend ten thousand hours getting good at a game to beat like you know, you know, at, you know, at this point, resolve. I imagine like there's you can probably count on, I would you know I would imagine you can tell me if I'm wrong. There's probably like less than twenty people in America that you like. Oh, they're like, I can't beat them, right? Like you know, there's probably like people in your mind like oh, okay, they're really hard, but for the most part, you're you know you're already pretty competitive, and so uh, the feeling would be like okay, why waste so much time in a game that's you know competitively relatively small? But I think the friendship aspect that you talked about is actually really big. And, you know, the the longer you play this game, and I've, I've talked to a lot of people who have played for a long time. Um, I had this conversation with, Fir I don't know if you know Farai. Um, he's an old-school Goki player from, from SoCal. And he said, like, yeah, like, you know, back in, like, 2007 or whatever, I was, like, trying to get good. And, you know, I was competing, I was going to FFA, and I was, like, really wanted to get good, and I was practicing. I don't practice anymore, and that's not why I play the game anymore. I, like, I play... Because my friends are my, you know, my third strike friends are my real friends. And now this game is just like part of my culture and my life and my friendship circles. Like I'll probably play forever just because these are my, these are my boys, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, I think it's a very, it's been one of the bigger, um, I've learned a lot um, about myself and in real life from mm -hmm. playing third strike. And I know I'm not the only one who's, has had that experience um and it it's one of I, it was something i wasn't expecting was for the social aspect of it to be you know one of my favorite parts i love uh going out to don's or boiler and hearing b and cash talk to each other about how cheap that the other person's character is it's just the greatest sure yeah. um and then being a part of it too and mm -hmm. It, it's just uh it's really great i'm really thankful for it um the friends i've made for playing this game i hope i you know keep them forever i hope we all play forever yeah absolutely um, um okay next question who are your favorite players to watch um uh <clears throat> i like watching uh rx <laughs> and <laughs> Yeah, and and Rue, I like watching Kuroda a lot. Um, his playstyle is just, it's um, it's it, I can't even really comprehend it. It's just so, it's like surgical, and I think, oh, it, it, on that same thing, it, Cartola, I love watching because he's probably the closest I've seen to someone emulating that Kuroda style. Mm -hmm. Um. And I know he, one of, it's one of his favorite players. Uh, uh, I'm trying to think. I, I obviously I love watching Yurian. Um I don't 
really love watching super aggressive Urians just because I don't understand. Mm-hmm. And so sometimes it just doesn't always click for me. It's like, oh, that combo was really cool. Yeah, you know, and I usually that's what I watch them for is I maybe I learned some new crazy setup or whatever. But before that, it's like I want to claw my eyes out watching how they're play how they're playing neutral. Like I would have <laughs> died to that a long time ago, and it's just working <laughs> for you. <laughs> um, I like watching um other players outside of Urian players too. Like uh, I really enjoy watching Nika play, um, Yuki. Um, uh, Exodus too. Uh, I like watching the. Uh, <laughs> I, I I really like watching the, those three specifically because they play so many characters, mm-hmm. and so it's very interesting. Um, uh, sort of new development. I really like watching Lance Yang. <laughs> oh no! Amazing! Oh no! <laughs> I told you, Resolve has excellent taste. Jesus fuck! <laughs> what are we doing here, boys? All right, podcast very, over. Uh... <laughs> Good very night, fun. Good night, everyone. <laughs> very fun set with Yuki Dudley. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I agree. don't know. I, I mean, <laughs> uh, I could probably go on, go on forever and name a ton of players, but um, yeah, I, I like, uh, and obviously, like Steel Hammer, right? I, I've gone back and watched his his run at, at least a hundred times. And it, it sort of like proves right, like it's possible to just be great, to be the greatest that day. Yeah, I know. I love that because that's you know right. If you talk to Dan, and I think he probably said it on the podcast, it's not like he beats those guys every time he plays them, but yeah. it really isn't any given Sunday scenario. Um, I remember that year I was talking to Yi, and I, it was Yi and Frankie right after the tournament, and that was how Yi described it as well. It's like at this point. You know, obviously there's still some separation amongst players, right? There's there's levels to this shit, as they say. Uh, but, you know, when you get into top 16, it becomes an any given Sunday scenario um, where, you know, like it could be your day and you could just fucking, you know, Dan beat, what, he'd be like Ahmed, Yuki, Nika, Mami, all in a row. Uh, yeah. You know, oh, Daisuke as well, right? That's, that's just, an, that's that. an insane yeah. run. And that means it's possible. Urian can do it. Yeah, it, it's 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 right there, you know. And um, I hope that uh, you know, I hope I, I can be the one to to do it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay, I think that's all the que- the chat questions I saw. Uh, Ray, you want to start us off with our rapid fire questions? We just got a few. Yeah, yeah, we just got a couple. Uh, so this one's my one of my favorite ones because I learn a lot about the people who come on. So top favorite games of all time. Top five. Top five. Doesn't have to be fighting oh, games. You don't have to include Third Strike if you don't want to. But just top five favorite video games all time. So this one's kind of probably weird for me because I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't consider myself um, really a gamer. It's like growing up, I have like these hyper fixations on a one game and I just play so much of it. Like I've I I might have put more time into Skyrim than I have uh mm. Third Strike at this point. Yeah. I, I've put so much time in it. So I mean that's probably on the list, Third Strike. Uh man. I, I really haven't played like a ton of stuff. Mm-hmm. I played a lot of um uh, Mario Kart Seven on the yeah. on the DS. <laughs> uh, it's kind of it, it'll it's it'll probably be a weird sort of list like that. Like I I just remember dumping a lot of time into like specific games. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see. Now you when you say Skyrim, are we saying like vanilla Skyrim? Or are we talking like you modded the shit out of it, Skyrim? Uh, van- well, because van- I I vanilla because uh I didn't. I've been on like I I don't know anything about computers. The one I have is the first one I've ever had, um, and mods didn't come to console till maybe a couple of years. It might have been longer now, but they remastered Skyrim for the PS4, and they promised mods, 
and then they didn't come for a long time, and then they finally added them, but they were really restrictive. Like, the only modding I've ever done to Skyrim is usually, like, weather and, like, graphical mods, I guess. Like, I- I've just played a lot of vanilla Skyrim. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the way my wife is, too. She's got hundreds, hundreds of hours of fucking Skyrim. Yeah. She loves it. Xbox 360, so... What else do you got? Uh, yeah, we got Third Strike Skyrim, and what else so far? Um, Mario Kart Seven. Mario Kart Mario Mario Kart for the DS, right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you got two more. Um, <laughs> oh man. Uh, I don't know. I, 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 those are like the three probably most played. Um, okay. It's. Uh, I don't know. I I I didn't really even play a lot of like Call of Duty. I know a lot of people did, like mm. same age range, right? Um, mm-hmm. I played a lot of two uh, Black Ops two around when it was out. I uh, just got good at quick scoping, and then that's all I did. <laughs> and then, uh, so I guess I could be on. I'd be number four. Huh? I, um. Let's see. I guess Minecraft Five. I don't know. <laughs> like, okay. Oh, yeah. I'm trying to think oh, of yeah. games. That, uh, it, it's it's sort of a, a lot of Third uh, Strike players are also they play a lot of um, games uh, too, and I always sort of feel a little left out. I, I haven't. I, I know there's like classics, right? Like mm-hmm. games that um, everybody should play, whatever. And I just I haven't. Like, I put a ton of time into like random games that I just had access to at the time and 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 that's how it went. Okay. Gotcha. Well if you're struggling to come up with five games, we gotta get you on the uh, Left 4 Dead 2 train. Oh my so, god. No, there is there is a fucking game. Shit. We're, we're gonna invite you to our Left 4 <sighs> Dead 2 sessions. <laughs> I I I mean I'm open to trying stuff like I just <laughs> at this point it's more of like a um I'm I'm just too embarrassed to ask now. You know, I'm like <laughs> I'm 20 and I I've played like that. That's a pretty crazy top five, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> so I'm really uh, I'm open to. Play. Oh, you know what? Actually, I, I I forgot about one game. I I put a lot of time in. I guess I could take out like uh either Minecraft or Block. I, I played a lot of Pokemon Emerald. Yeah, okay. That's nice. Yeah. Hell yeah. Uh. Yeah. Yeah, we got a few people who are like super big Pokemon guys in yeah. the MW. Yeah, I got Sunny and Cho, both big time. They play what do you call it? That Pokemon? It's like the online Pokemon one. Those yeah, uh, yeah. I, don't know. I haven't tried it, but I, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah, Sunny just traveled for a trading card Pokemon tournament too. I don't know. I don't know anything about that. <laughs> yeah, me neither. Uh, outside of red, blue, and yellow, get the fuck out of here! I don't know what to tell you, dude. One fifty one. <laughs> that's it. Yeah, that's that's where the Pokemon series ends. That, After well, actually, one, for me, dude. it's gold, silver, red, blue, yellow, gold, silver. That's where it ends. Oh, that's that's even too much for me, dude. That's it. It ends with Mew. So, uh, so so next question. This one's always fun. Um, you gotta build your your dream co op team, five players, and they have to be American players. Who are you putting on that team? And this can be like what you think, like oh, what would be the theoretical best team, and or it could just be like. Oh, the team. If I were to go to co-op, who are my four teammates that I want? You know, either yeah. way, whichever one you want to answer. Okay. Um, definitely Juan. Okay. Hell yeah. Um, am, am I? A, I'm on the team, right? You don't. I mean, that's <laughs> you up don't to you. have to. You, but you, you can, can answer that either to. way. Yeah. If you want to be okay. on the team, you're on the team. All right. Well. Probably not if I want them to win. <laughs> <You know? laughs> All right. So, um, probably uh, one. Uh, I don't. It's hard for me to. I, I haven't um, watched a ton of team stuff. Like even the Cooperation Cup. I don't. I don't know that I've even watched a single one all the way through. Um, it's just all. I don't know what I'm looking for. I, I I think I tuned in to a little bit of the the last one, but it was uh like four in the morning or something. Yeah. <laughs> it was really late. Uh, and 
once one of the few people I've seen play in person and he was insane. Yeah, I don't know. If I'm going just off of like, you know, skill, I guess it would probably be close to a lot of people. It's like Juan is my personal pick, but then after that, maybe like Nika, Yuki. Uh, you had three? What's your last two? Mm, Ryan seems like he does pretty well. Mm-hmm. Maybe Ryan. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, I think Lance, you've teamed with Exodus. Uh, what do you have to say? About <laughs> <No>. <laughs> he, Kang is the worst teams play. Uh, so so okay, I have two people I have teamed with a lot of times in my life. Um, Kang and my uh, best friend David, who I grew up with, and both of them have contributed very little to our team's <laughs> runs for a fucking decade. I do not recommend either of them to team with. That's just my, uh, yeah. Don't team with Kang. Kang doesn't care about singles tournaments that much. He cares even less about team tournaments. So, um, uh, Let's see. I don't know. I, I guess, like, uh, five-star. I don't know. Like, yeah. Yeah. Good call. Good pretty call. good team. Yeah, it's a good team. I like Juan as like that dangerous pick. Dumb. Uh, he's in, yeah, he's insane in teams. You know, like, we we have to say that, right? He wiped us out this yeah. last year. Uh, no, I, that's a yeah. I think you you definitely when you're doing team instruction, it's not always like can I find the five best players. Sometimes it's like let's find a really great player who's like you know if he gets hot, he can just fucking destroy the other team. You know, Dinjin yeah. Ryu, uh, yeah. Makoto can you know some of those more volatile characters can be like that. Yeah, I think yeah. You, I think you pick someone of those like, like yeah, Dinjin Ryu, like a Tenren, Ibuki, like very very strong, like especially in a single game format. Yeah, th- those players can do some damage for sure. Yeah, for sure. Awesome. Shin, and you kind of over maybe you already answered this one, um, but I'll just ask it uh, straight up. Uh, who is your third strike rival if you have one? I know you kind of mentioned Tommy earlier. Uh, yeah. Uh- like a, that that little story with Tommy is funny, um, but probably not. I, I don't think I would put Tommy, Tommy Fuego as my rival. Yes, Tommy yeah. Fuego for Tommy sure. Tommy Fuego, yeah. But um, I don't know. I, I think sort of a maybe kind of a different sort of answer to that. I think I have somebody I would like to be my rival. You know, and us just go on be super competitive with each other forever and it's joyous is who i've oh, talked about yeah. very exciting um like right now maybe i slightly get the better of him but it's also online maybe he crushes me offline i don't know all, all i know is like the difference between us i feel is not that big and it gets smaller every day mm. um he's great and uh you know i i, I hope uh i hope he uh can push each other um, for as long as we're playing. Yeah, I could, you know, that if you guys both keep playing for a long time, I could definitely just see like that being grand finals of, you know, Jazzy, whatever, 15 in a decade. Yeah. yeah. You know, by the, yeah. by the time you're my age, I will be nearing retirement as yeah. like as a human. <laughs> so you've got a long career ahead of you if you want it. Yeah. And it, it's just sort of like, I, I watch a lot of footage, and I've talked about that I watch a lot of Yurian, but I also I just watch a lot of high-level footage in general because I, I feel like you've talked about you know character skill versus third strike skill, and I think that third strike skill is very important. And it's very impressive. Like I want to be able to be like a uh, Exodus or a Yuki, like a Nika, have these side characters that like they're not really their that's not their main character, but they play them and then now they're just one of the best in the country you know i think that's that would be very cool um so i watch a lot of uh a lot of footage from a lot of different characters and i've watched a lot of young a lot of top young players and i see like the, the stuff i see joyous doing stuff like taking it from them in a, in a way similar that i steal things from like top japanese yurians and it's just, it makes me very giddy, you know? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Very exciting. 
Awesome. Um, okay, that's where we're going to all of our questions. Um, before we wrap it up, do you have any last thoughts, any parting words you, of wisdom you want to leave us with? Um, uh, you know, uh, play Third Strike, obviously. Great game. Best game. Um, yes, the best game. Uh, um, I, don't, I don't know. Uh, I don't think I really have anything to say. I hope uh, this sort of uh, this podcast was uh, entertaining to listen to. I am not the greatest with words, and I feel like I ramble sometimes and don't make total sense. But uh, I appreciate you guys having me. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, I don't know. I think that's I think that's about it. Um, I'll be home tomorrow if anybody wants to catch some games. <laughs> nice. nice. For sure. No, you did sure. excellent. This was a great podcast. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I think you were very eloquent the whole time. This yeah. was good stuff. I'm glad. All right. Well, we'll go ahead and wrap it up there, boys. Thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, I don't think we have a next guest lined up, do we, Lance? I don't think so. Uh, no, we got some people on the docket, but we got to figure out dates for them. So yeah. next so episode coming someday with someone. Yeah, just pay attention to Twitter. I'll post it like two hours before it goes live, of course. So just fucking be oh, ready for first, that. Oh, first Jazzy online tournament is tomorrow. For, I get for the, oh, yeah, yeah. Stupid Fighters, right? I think they're hosting the first one. If you guys so. want to... Uh, get involved in that for sure. I am working, out. so I won't be attending. But Yeah, I might be working. I'll have to check. So, uh, But Saturday, I'll be at the in-person one in Arcade. So shout out to Arcade Tournament. So, uh, But yeah, once again, thank you guys for tuning in. Resolve, thank you for uh, doing the podcast with you. Really appreciate your time. Uh, and yeah, thanks, guys. We'll see you in the next one. Later. Yeah.